Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Liam Murphy here back with another stream with a guest today, Jacob Sand Dog Sanderson, going to be getting his opinions on the incoming rookie class. If there's time allowed, we're going to do a big board draft on underdog. So let's get to it, gang. Jacob, how are you doing today? Tell the people how you've been. I'm doing great, man. Combine time. This feels like kind of the official, well, at least it used to be the official start of the dynasty season. Now it seems like these psychopaths, it's like halftime of the Super Bowl. People are already trying to figure out the next fantasy season. There's people drafting the big boards. But for me, at least, I always feel like the combine is when we start to fully uh, pick up steam and head into the next year. So it's the warm and fuzzy feelings are out. I, I already did a pick them betting the over unders on 40 times on underdog today. So we're back. What positions did you choose for the pick ems? Yeah, I just I just did the overs. I think I think underdog is being pretty kind to these people. I bet uh Braylon Allen over four five. Um but, but did you choose like all wide receivers? Were you grinding like D tackle three oh, times? I did. I mean, they only have so many listed. Um, I didn't do any of the defensive stuff. I, I stuck to running backs and wide receivers. Yeah. Fair, fair. Um, <laughs> Gabe Davis in the chat. That is My hands are that's just rude. Nice. Yeah. Come on now. Um, yeah, so Jacob and I, you know, we co-managed a main event team on the FFPC. We did very well, won our league. Jacob, I also, he was one of the first guys I remember hearing really into A-chan last year. So um a rookie a rookie grinder and i very transparently do not watch college football do not have a formula i think that's something i will work on something i might find time to do is just to like rip up a regression formula and see how i can do at predicting certain things um the combine is today we or started today nothing no positions that we care about um and we did hear some real nfl news on this strange February 29th, Alexander Madison has been released. So if you were one of the people drafting Alexander Madison in the fourth round or however high he got, that's down bad, my friends. I, I was not one of those people. What's your not take just on release, the, uh, Released with $400,000 of cap savings. Yeah, uh, 600 k so, I like, think it was. Oh, yeah. okay. So released with entirely negligible cap savings after the cap just went up $6 million. So basically, this they just decided like, we're not getting any financial benefit out of releasing you. We simply would rather have other people on the roster. Like that's, yeah, that's, that's just basically the choice. It's like we would just rather sign like a UDFA um, scrub and, and put yeah. him on the roster instead of you. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly what it is. Told. They're saying we'd, ba we'd basically rather have an undrafted free agent and see what happens. Um, so before, you know, I think we're going to do just through the positions, your top five. But before we do that, and of course, every year is different. This year seems like a, a down year for tight end. Um, only like really two names in the mix. Running back, uh, it doesn't really seem like there's any set order. But yeah. what is your typical process for getting your rookie ranks? Are you someone who grinds a lot of college? Did you watch a lot of college? Are you just involved watching the sport? Are you someone who has a more data process? Talk to us about that before we get into how you come to about your rookie ranks for sure. So first thing I'll say at the top is like, it's February 29th. My rookie ranks are very unsettled. I'm in the yeah. process of, of making them as we go. Um, I would say in terms of my process, like I play a decent amount of Debbie. So I already have kind of like a, a decent take on a lot of these guys just coming in and watch a lot of college football, kind of rooting for my Debbie teams, my C to C teams. So I do have some pre-existing knowledge from that. And then really, like, I don't do, I haven't bothered creating a model, frankly, because I think, like, and I'll cite two guys in JJ Zacharyson and Pat Crane, where, like, their models are just 
to me, pretty fantastic. If I was going to devote the time to making a model from scratch, I imagine I would use most of the same inputs. And so I don't think that my model would look very different. So I just don't see it as like a massive value add for me to go through and just kind of like recreate the same type of thing that I think other people already do well. And if there's little things that I think, you know, I would nitpick, I can just do that kind of subjectively. So then for wide receiver, honestly, like, I don't know that I have all that different of a take from wide receiver from like the database side of the market, other than just maybe a little bit of feel and from watching them casually for running back. I do go in, I, I watch all the all 22, I film grade them out. And then I kind oh, of you're, so you're grinding. You put on you put on the film to I, I fully grind the running backs. Yeah. So okay. and, and then I, I combine that with you know all the different statistical indicators that I think are important, a lot of what goes into other people's models. I check out the output scores and then just kind of uh uh kind of put that all together a little bit. So also I see someone saying chowing down on stream. Yeah, it's Pacific time, buddy. So it's this starts 5 p.m. my time, which means I was sprinting home from the office grabbed a dinner on the way. So every time Liam wants to talk for like 30, 40 seconds, I'm, I'm grabbing a bite or two. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, no, that that's why we both laughed. <laughs> um, you know, eating food is very welcome on this stream, <laughs> not a professional setting. Um, no, totally. Like there's no need to like reinvent the wheel with a lot of this stuff. That's something I've said in fantasy football, like the ability to, take in information from others and decide what is important. Like if you find someone who you trust their wide receiver ranks or whatever, and you know, you take in other sources, you're just saving yourself time. So there really is no need to do a lot of these things. I do want to ask a little bit more about as far as the running back film grades, like how, you know, when you deal with a running back who is in, d2 or whatever the sunset league or whatever the hell it's called yeah. in college like how are you dealing when the when they're playing against like future accountants and teachers how do you how does that differ for you versus like what Bijan was i mean a lot of that is a lot of that solves itself from a draft capital perspective where like i would say i care the further we get into the draft the less i care how quote unquote good i think they are and the more I care about what I think they can do. So like, that's sort of what I spend a lot of my time on, frankly, is like, I think the people that understand what works best for fantasy, often a lot of people doing models. And I think a lot of people that do really great film work don't always necessarily equate that to fantasy. And what I try to do is, is bring those two things together the best that I can. When we're talking about a lot of these small school guys, you know, on the rare occasion that the NFL gives these guys legitimate draft capital, then I think we can dive in a little bit more. And I think that's just also like a pretty massive signal in terms yeah. of the faith in that talent profile. If we're talking about uh, Dylan Lobb this year, or Lobe, or I don't even really know how to pronounce the last name's pronounced, or Isaiah Davis, or some other guy, whoever anybody else's favorite tiny school, probably day three running back is, where I look at more from that perspective is like, and Dylan Lobb's a great example of this. Do I know if he's good? Not really. It's it's hard. It's legitimately hard to like watch and get a great feel when everybody else is so freaking slow. Probably not good. Like he's probably going to go yeah. to three, play to New Hampshire. What do I really care about for a guy like that? It's like, well, he has the requisite size. He can catch passes. And so that means like if he gets lucky enough where he's probably going to be a backup running back in the NFL anyway, all I really care about from a backup running back is not necessarily are they great and more – if something happens where they fall ass backwards into a role, can they stay on the field for 80% of the snaps? Can they play on third downs? Can they stay in at the goal line? And so that's usually what I'm mostly looking for as we get further and further into the draft. And I'm just picking like round six picks and round five picks. Like I think being a talent truther at that point in time has burned me more often than not. And usually I'm just looking at like who has the requisite fantasy based skills where if luck befalls them, they're going to be able to stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, like, just look at what Latavius Murray, right? Like, Latavius yeah. Murray essentially out of the NFL, and next thing you know, has a serviceable role on a top offense in the league, catching passes because he could blitz protect and fell into some touchdowns, you know? Was he that useful? No. But if that's a young undrafted free agent who is a, has a little bit more juice, you can find some fantasy goodness there. Um, on the running backs as well, I wanted, you know, Something I noticed in this past year is 
things have kind of moved towards what I would call like the dream Madden offense in some ways, <laughs> as far as the NFL, where like when we were playing, you know, Madden as kids, we were like, hey, let's just put this guy who's fast as hell on the field and I'm sure we'll get touchdowns and things will work out. Right. And so, yeah. yes, HN was the big one, but then we also had Kendra Miller. We had uh, McLaughlin with the Broncos. Like we had a lot of these smaller size speed backs who I've not seen as many guys like that get shots every year in the NFL. Like, of course there was Chris Johnson, but he mm-hmm. touted the rock, you know, time and time again. And so that does feel like a little bit of a change to me where these guys are getting shots who are just as fa- fast as hell. Um, have you noticed that yourself and who are there any guys like that who stick out in this year's class? Yeah, if there's a guy like that this year, and I do agree that it seems that's part of how the NFL is going. It's it's also just part of the move away from the feature back and to more complimentary backfields just opens up more room for guys and, like this. And cover two, like you're gonna sit two safeties back. Yep. We're gonna give this fast guy a right. little outlet pass. You know, how are you gonna tackle him? Right. Like we live in a world now where like I don't have the ADP in front of me, but like I, I think all of Gibbs, HN, and James Cook are like top 15 running back picks this year. Right, I, I'm pretty sure. Or close yeah, to like it. Cook's, Cook is like noticeably cheaper, which is probably just a little inefficient. But H and Gibbs are like second round, you know. Plus. Right, and I mean, Gibbs is kind of his own thing, and that he went 12th overall. That yeah. all these guys are like non-traditional archetypes, and it's just a matter of you know the coaching staff being like, oh, like these these guys have a specific skill that's really useful to our offense. We're going to use them. I think the guy in this class is a little tough because. Usually what you want out of this, well, we don't have 40 times. Usually what you want out of this archetype is ideally someone that you feel really good about in the passing game, right? Because if you think we're only going to see eight to 10 carries add on five, six targets, now we're cooking. And that's something that, you know, those three guys we just mentioned had. The guy that I'd probably say is closest to this archetype would be like a Jalen Wright. My issue with him is I just don't know that he adds that much more than like rudimentary skills in the passing game where I think he can stay on the field. I think he can pass protect a little bit. I think he can catch swing passes, but I'm not sure that he's like a particularly advanced route runner or that he's going to be a guy that they're going to be running angle routes or wheel routes and stuff for, especially not in year one. But if you want a guy that I think in the right offensive system where there's a lot of space on the field can just absolutely roll, like that would be the guy I would, I would expect him to probably run under a 4-4, plays in this bizarre Tennessee offense in which they play like four wide receivers out all the time. And so you're watching, and usually there's like five dudes in the box and there's five linemen blocking them. And every Jalen Wright rep is either the five guys block correctly and he just runs through the hole for 30 yards because there's nobody in the box or someone misses the block and he gets pasted for minus four because he has like no power at all the line scrimmage so that would probably be the guy i think that is like in this archetype um in terms of like a true home run threat and then i mean well trey benson is interesting because he's a bigger guy probably a way in 210 215 maybe even 220 and he has a lot of like vision issues that get some people in the film community concerned uh, but he also has massive home run speed. So it'll it'll be interesting to see. I, I think he's another guy that's going to flirt with 4-4 uh, four, four flat, high 4 threes tomorrow. And the other thing that's kind of happening from like a meta top level is Saquon is old. Eckler is yeah. old. Kamara is old. So there are going to be jobs coming, jobs opening for rookie running backs or just like second year guys who have been on, you know, practice squads whatever all right so um let's i I have this really fancy excel sheet that i created this is copyrighted please don't uh try to take this on your own um actually i don't think we need us that big let's do let's do this bigger and let's zoom in now these of course the combine hasn't happened the nfl draft hasn't happened so This is just how you feel today, right? This is not, you know, the end all be all. And I want these ranks for how you think they will score in fantasy in the upcoming season from a best ball lens, right? This is Mm -hmm. primarily I do best ball. Best ball is primarily how you can make money uh, playing fantasy football, significant money. And so these are who we think are going to score the most points fantasy wise, 
not just, yeah, there's some vibe base ranks here, not just what order they're going to go in the draft, which, you know, if you had to fall back on something that that would be a good uh, corollary corollary. Okay. So quarterback, who do you think is going to be the top fantasy scorer in fantasy next year for the rookie quarterbacks? Yeah, I think probably Jaden Daniels. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens. I think the concern would be if New England goes ahead and drafts with Jacoby Brissett and they let him start the first six weeks or something, then I don't think the difference between him and Caleb and even May would be necessarily enough where you'd want to just eat those six weeks. But right now we're drafting the big board, which is 20 rounds. And so it's way easier to be drafting three quarterback teams in this format than it will be when we actually get into drafting best ball mania. And by then, of course, we're going to know, you know, a little bit more about what Daniel's situation is and when we expect him to actually start. But if I'm drafting today, my big focus is just who's starting in week 15, week 16, and week 17 at quarterback, which means I don't want to draft Russell Wilson, who <laughs> might get benched no. in week 12, right? I don't want to draft I don't want to draft Eric him last Carr. year because of that. <laughs> Right. So I don't know if Jaden Daniels is going to start week one, but I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be started in the final three weeks. And he is I, not the only one to have said it, but I think like truly the most electric dynamic rusher of the football since Lamar Jackson to come out at the quarterback position. And it's going to be big play type rushing. Like he's a guy that if you think about best balls and spike weeks, like that's a guy that can have a 75 yard touchdown run in a game. Very kind of Lamar Jackson esque where we might not see the goal line rushing appeal of that floor, but in a weekly game, he can go completely berserk. And you pair that with, I would say, his best attribute as a passer is the deep ball. So you have a guy that where I have some issues with Daniels, but from what he does well, he runs, he throws deep. So from a best ball perspective, that's that's everything you want. Um, two would be Caleb Williams. Well, just, well let, let's pause you there. Yeah. I, I have two questions. As okay. you're a Colts fan, but yeah. as, a, as a, you know, trying to ignore that, how would you... Do you think Daniels will outscore Richardson or close? And who do you think would have been drafted higher if they were in the same class? I don't think Daniels will outscore Richardson. And a big part of that is because I think Richardson is in such an optimal environment. Like he's going to be playing with Shane Steichen, who's going to run probably top five plays per game, right? He's going to have Taylor. He's going to have Pittman. He's going to have Downs. And I've obviously been watching all the Chris Ballard press conferences. Everything that I'm hearing it seems like they're pretty intent on adding another big weapon in the draft. So I think, and he plays indoors. So I think Richardson is, is probably still the guy there. Um, if they've been in the same draft class, like it's, it's really fascinating because Daniels has this incredible final season that is way, way, way ahead of anything Richardson did in college. But of course that comes as fifth year as a starter, right? Richardson started yeah. for one year. So it's almost impossible to compare I think what they share is rushing ability and deep passing ability. Richardson's tools are probably better, right? It is a short yardage runner. He's not, he's a way larger man. Like Daniels is pretty skinny. He's built like me. Um, both I think struggle in terms of looking over the middle of the field. The one big edge I'd give Richardson is sack avoidance. Like that's something that he always excelled with immediately in college was getting rid of the ball and scrambling and avoiding sacks. That's probably Daniel's biggest weakness. So I, I would rather have Richardson in the NFL. I, I like his profile a little bit more, but I understand there's no statistical basis for that. Um, but that's just the guy I think I like a little more. If, was, if they're both the same draft class, I don't know. Pro probably both pro probably go up to a pretty high. It would come down to preference. And, you know, we have seen that sacks is kind of a quarterback stat, right? Like, yeah. field, like Fields is a big example of this, where it's kind of rare to, like, get rid of this trait. I think Josh Allen actually... Like I don't know how he struck, I, how he did with this in college, but maybe he actually was a guy who took more sacks in college than expected. He was actually and, pretty good at that in college. Okay, like yeah. he threw, he had accuracy concerns, but honestly, really similar to Anthony Richardson, where like there was accuracy issues and efficiency issues, but sack avoidance, he was strong. And that and that's carried over. And do you think Jaden Daniels will be the second pick in the draft, or do you think it will be May? I think it. Really should be May. Um, I don't know if it will be May. We'll see. I'm I'm guessing it will be. I just think he's the way more conventional prospect. 
but I don't know. I feel like 70, 30 about that probably. Yeah. And I also see, I also think the commanders having the Sam Howell year will influence that a little bit where maybe they'll be like, let's go with the traditional guy over the, <laughs> the guy who's just a better Howell in some regards. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, the Patriots is a huge inflection point for this draft, right? We should talk about that, where I think most people, including myself, would like to see the Patriots take a quarterback. And I say this as, you know, a, a Bills um, fan. But what we don't want, at least what I don't want, and I don't think a lot of people want, is we don't want to see Marvin Harrison Jr. be a Patriot because that's just objectively a lot less fun than him being a Cardinal with Kyler if that's the alternative, in my opinion. Um, okay. So QB two for you from a fantasy perspective, who are you rolling with? Yeah, it would be Caleb for me. Um, I think him and May are reasonably similar fantasy profiles, but I kind of just agree with the rest of the world that I think Caleb is a little bit better, probably more dynamic. And the Chicago situation, which I fully expect them to go to Chicago. I, I know there's yeah. some people that, that don't. Um, I think it's all of a sudden pretty good, right? Like he's going to get I, – I like Waldron a decent amount. He already has DJ Moore there, and that's fine. They're probably going to add another receiver either via trade or at ninth overall or somehow. They have the assets to do it. So I think it's a pretty good spot. And, um, yeah, I feel quite good about um, – Caleb and I think him and him and Daniels I think are a pretty similar value and I think May is too so do you think there is any chance Williams comes close to what Mahomes did in his second year which was his his rookie year you know he sat so his second mm -hmm. year is when he played and he lit fantasy up that year as like a 14th round pick or something I I didn't even play best ball back yeah. then um do you think there's any you know obviously he won't be – I mean, he will be a true rookie, A. Mm -hmm. uh, and B, I, his weapons will probably be worse than what Mahomes had, like almost undoubtedly. DJ yeah. Moore, very nice, but, you know, he's not going to have Tyreek and Kelsey. So do you think there's any chance he comes close to that? Did Mahomes have like 50 touchdown passes or something? I yeah. Mean, I don't think he's going to beat that, and he is a rookie. Uh, not B, but like 80% of that, you know, like – I mean, I think it's like within at least a possibility that you could have like a Herbert-ish rookie season. I mean, maybe a Sprout-ish rookie season plus run more than those guys. I think that's totally possible. Um, I don't want to hold him to that type of standard. I think it'll take him some getting used to playing in a more structured NFL offense. But I'm I'm like definitely not one of the Caleb haters. Like I, I think yeah. he is a fantastic prospect. I think he deserves to be the 101. I think the Bears have clear choice in front of them but they're gonna be very happy with their choice for a very long time um i don't know i'm not gonna go as far as say patrick mahomes second year but i think he'll be good it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's a top 12 quarterback as a rookie yeah and i want to say a couple of things one is you talked about um maybe daniels needs to sit that's just something we've seen less and less recently where these top quarterbacks sit for good reason like Last year, I, some people were like, oh, Minshew's going to start. And I'm like, are you fucking insane? Minshew's not going to start over Richardson. Like, the guy's raw. You know, you need to give need to give him a shot. Um, that was now, so maybe, funny. Like, as a person who follows the Colts beats every day, like, I was just telling people everywhere, I was like, I promise you, like, Richardson's starting week one. Everybody's like, I don't think so. I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm hearing the practice sports every day. Like, I watch every interview. I'm like, it's a lot. Like, this guy's starting week one. Yeah, that's just people to like refusing to look into the situation and just speculating. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, I don't think Stroud has the year he has if he does if he's not throwing to Nico Collins and Tank Dell for a big uh, part of it. And on the other hand, though, like he had massive O line trouble, so like that was kind of impressive that he overcame the injured O-line of the Texans, you know, he has, he had some studs on the line, but like they were starting new, like scrubs at guard it, for, from my memory, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll see how the bears situation compares there. Um, and yeah, I'm totally with you. The bears would be crazy to pass on the Williams opportunity. And it really does seem that fields will be a Falcon, which I think is, is fun for the Falcons, right? Like, 
unless they're going to get a guy, you know, unless McCarthy or whoever they could get at 108 or trade up is like, can be a legitimate yeah. top five guy, like roll the it's dice hard, on fields like, and fill the seats and try to win a, a winnable division, you know? Yeah. Like I'm not a fields fan, but I get it. It's, I don't know what the alternative is, right? Like, and it's a second round pick. Like you can try like, again. If I were the year. Falcons, like, yeah, if I had the opportunity to trade up to one, I would trade a ton. If I had the opportunity to trade up to two, I would trade a ton for that. I, I don't know that I'd mortgage the farm for Jaden Daniels, but I, I would understand if they did. Like, I don't think Washington and Chicago are going anywhere. So it's not really up to them. I'm like, what are your other options? Like, <clears throat> sign Kirk. Okay, that's fine. Like, I would do that if that was an option available to me. I don't know if it is available to them. Other than him, like, who are you signing? Russ? Ryan Tannehill? Like, that's not that's not a solution either. And they're kind of too good to tank, right? Like, even if you signed, even if you intentionally tried to have a horrible quarterback, like they already had the worst quarterback in the league last year. They still won seven games. So yeah. I think I think that they're if you're the only shot is to take a shot on either Fields or a second or third tier rookie quarterback and hope to hit kind of an unlikely home run. And, and yeah, I, mean, I think like, it would be reasonable to try that with Fields. I think it would be just as reasonable to just take like Bo Nix in the second round. But it's up to them, right? And I don't think any of those options are like a high probability bet. So give it a shot. Yeah, like trying to go the Will Levis route makes sense too. But like Fields kind of seems like it fits how the Falcons will try to win games, right? Like smash mouth run game, pl you know, play action to London and Pitts uh, who are deep, you know, like Pitts is a good, a good deep guy. Mm -hmm. It just seems like that it's a good fit there. Um, yeah, and it's cheap. It's cheap. It doesn't, you know, if they suck in two years, they can draft a quarterback in the first round again. Um, mm -hmm. All right. You're 103. Yeah, it's, this one's pretty clear. It's Drake May. And I, I like Drake May a lot. He, he'd be my 102 in like a dynasty format just because I feel more confident that he's good than I do with Jaden Daniels. Um, and yeah, I think... A, his, his athleticism, I think, is underrated, um, probably because he's white. <laughs> just like, let's just be honest about it. Um, he, he definitely has, like, scrambling ability. I don't know if he's going to be a guy that they're going to make the focus of a designed rushing attack, but I think he at least has, let's say, like, Ryan Tannehill-level rushing ability, Sam Howell-level rushing ability, that kind of thing. Um, Which is significant. Or, those, are, yeah. those are goal line touchdowns, you know? Totally. Um, I think looking at a guy that has an arm strength and ability to make every single throw, a guy who, especially in the context of this class, is one of the more sack avoidant quarterbacks in a class that really likes eating them. Um, and really the only issue that I've seen is people concerned about some ball placement, some accuracy, some footwork. I would just look at it as you have a guy who has a lot of experience playing a lot of games, leading good offenses. And it's still super young, full year younger than Caleb Williams, two years younger than Jaden Daniels, only going to be 21 years old coming in. And I think has an opportunity to improve technically, but all the raw ability is there. And even in spite of some of those potentially technical concerns, has been a highly efficient college quarterback. So I, I would be really excited. I think Washington should take him at a 102. I'd be really surprised if they don't. Like, I just think he's really like a box checking type of prospect. Whereas Daniels, I think, is a lot more of a unconventional pick if they went as far as second overall. For a best ball perspective, though, like, yeah, I don't, I, Daniels' floor is just so high, right? Because we know he's going to run a ton. So he could be like an epic disaster of a quarterback and probably still score 16 fantasy points per game with spike beat potential. Whereas, you know, with May, like if he's if he's just bad and I'm wrong, then then he's Kenny Pickett or Bryce Young, and you just have a complete dud. So, um, but I, I would still I still think at the price he's going, like I want like 20 percent of him. I think you're getting a lot of free upside there. I mean, this year's class makes what the Panthers did just seem like suicide. But whatever, a discussion for another day. If you had to put an over under on rushing yards for Williams and May. What would your num number be for each of them individually? Yeah, if I and I'll, I'll assume that they're healthy for the year or, yeah. or almost all the year. Um, I'd probably say something like, hmm, like three fifty. I was gonna say I was gonna say higher than that for May. I was gonna say like four fifty or five hundred. I'll say four fifty for May and and let's say three seventy five for Williams. Okay. Um, now the Daniel's. I was gonna say like Daniel's. I was gonna say like eight hundred. 800 yeah that's if he, so if he plays the whole season like he'll he'll run a lot that's legit 
of course, Young can be a year two breakout man, but it just it doesn't. It's rarely it rarely it goes from that to that. Liam, um, Liam and I spent a lot of time because we had massive quarterback issues in our league where we had we had well we didn't we had Lamar and we uh, had Lamar Mingo, week man. thirteen. Yeah, but Lamar in a week thirteen by. And so we spent this, so many weeks arguing about who our week 13 quarterback was going to be. And we also had Mingo on this stupid team. And so I don't know how many times we discussed like the possibility of the Bryce Young breakout. Um, and it, it, the, the breakout didn't arrive. So we'll, no. we'll see. The issue with the Bryce Young breakout is like he's just so small and hardly all that athletic that like, you know, you, you, you brought up, you bring up Tua and – it's like, yeah, I think potentially he could be Tua, which means that if he if he defies the odds, has this massive comeback in his career, he will require two top 10 wide receivers to be like the QB 13 in fantasy, which is like, yeah, uh, it's like you, you need the best, you need the best play caller. You need like, Tyreek Hill, oh, you need Jalen Wall, and then maybe you can flirt with QB1 status. Why can't you be <laughs> the quarterback 14 when you spent the first overall pick is like, compared to what these guys can be is like, come on now. Like, what are we talking about? Um, all right. Quarterback four and five. I've, you know, I've heard a really mixed range on this as far as like, yeah, it, is there even, and then some people are like, no, for sure. McCarthy's going in the first round. Um, Bo, Bo, I think Bo Nix is like Davis hates. Uh, yeah. Like and I hate him for the same reason because Davis is another big college football guy and Bo Nix is a total meme. Like he was just such a bad quarterback for so long that we can't wrap our heads around the fact that he's good now. Okay. And then there's also Phoenix and Rattler, I think is like maybe yeah. like far out. So who's the, who's the one Oh four for you? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's boring, but I would just go with McCarthy because he's yeah. the one that I feel the most confident about actually starting games this year and starting a lot of them. And I think he has underrated mobility. That's, that's the the classier way of saying sneaky athletic. Uh, I think he's like a, not a very high upside best ball pick. I think he's a guy that I'll like a lot more in dynasty, but I think he's a guy where he has the sufficient mobility and he has the sufficient arm strength over the middle of the field where he can get into one of these puppet Shanahan schemes and be like a little Mick quarterback. Like he can, he can do a little bootleg thing and he can throw the 15 yard dig. And I don't know, it's, he can be like Jared Goff with mobility, which like, is that super exciting in best ball? Like maybe one day, probably not as a rookie. Uh, I think it'll be a safe bet. For That's not bad though, standpoint. Jared. Like a more mobile Jared Goff is like, okay, you're like approaching yeah. the top 10 discussion. Right. I mean, I don't think he'll be that in his first year. No. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind him as like a, like if it's the very end of the draft and my choice is Russell Wilson versus JJ McCarthy for my third quarterback, I have a lot more confidence McCarthy's playing in week 17. Yeah. So I'll take JJ McCarthy there and he could run for two touchdowns in a given week. So why not? Do you, um, do you think he for sure goes in the first round or is there any chance like, like remember the year, like, Every year we're like, oh, this guy's going in the first. And then he's like a third round guy. Like um, Willis was like yeah. that. Um, I remember Jimmy Clausen, this one that always comes to mind. There's a guy that people were like, yeah, one. And then he went like the second round. Yes. Um, uh, so, I mean, do you think he's a first round pick for sure? I'll never say for sure because okay. like at one point in time, Will Levis was like minus a thousand to be the fourth overall pick. Oh, Will Levis is another, one. Yes, Will year. Levis. How could I forget? But do you, <laughs> like, okay, you think it's more likely than not that he's a first round pick? I, I think it is because you just think about all the murderers row of teams from New York through to Atlanta, through to Minnesota, through to Vegas, where like not only do they need a quarterback, but I don't know what – other alternatives they have like last year it felt like there were more teams that were I, I either like less desperate for a quarterback or had other alternatives for quarterback but this year it just feels like there's like a run of teams right like yeah like I washington agree. and atlanta last year were examples of teams where everybody was saying like they need a quarterback and it, it turns out that they did but it kind of made sense for them if they were like we're not sold on these guys we have a young guy in house but now there's just teams with no alternative like if you're like if you're denver or you're Vegas, or you're Minnesota, it's like you, you kind of have to try something. Um, so it would just stun me if, if everybody passed this guy up. I think Denver is the furthest I see him falling. Like, he just seems like such a perfect Sean Payton fit that I'd be really surprised if he got to Denver and they didn't pull the trigger on it. 
Yeah, and I would say some of that depends on the GM situations as far as whether they're willing to gamble. What I mean by that is if you have GMs who have been there a while and kind of feel like this is their last shot, they're going to roll the dice on the rookie, right? Yeah. If you have a guy who just took over, maybe that guy can afford to take the best tackle in the draft and be like, okay, well, what did you want to do? We we wanted to get quarterback next year. You know, like they can buy a little bit of time that way. So I would look into that a little bit for those teams myself. Um, yeah. Who's your 105? And do you, do yeah, you think there even are fi- like five I don't think starters it, I, to emerge? I, I don't – I would be surprised if any of the rest of them went in the first round. So we could see like a Will Levis type season, maybe like rookie year Desmond Ritter type season where you start kind of midway through the year, maybe from whoever the stiff guy is. If I had to pick someone, it's got to be Knicks, I think, just because I think he has the tools. And I would even, like if I was an NFL team, I might even draft Spencer Rattler out of Michael Penix. I, I just think Penix is immobile. He has, I don't like his arm. I, I just think he's like, screams to me like Taylor Heineke, Gardner Minshew, like high-end backup quarterback for life. And we've seen him play forever. So I just don't think he has the physical abilities. I don't think there's anything left on, not on tape. Like we've watched this guy play for five years, a starter. So I, I, I would just be, I have a higher level of certainty with Penix that his ceiling is like being the 27th best quarterback in the league. Whereas I think with Knicks, at least a little, at least has a little bit of, pop to me physically where I could squint and see it, but I don't know. It would, it would take a lot. Like I'd be very surprised if, if we were legitimately excited about Bo Nix as an NFL quarterback. Fair. Um, well, I would say four quarterbacks, if they do go in the first round is exciting for not only the teams who land the quarterback, but also for teams further down the draft board who don't need a quarterback because you're more likely to get yep. your star wide receiver tackle corner whatever um let's move on to running back there have been some yeah. requests for 10 deep i i don't know do you think you have 10 well, deep at this time yeah i mean i could probably go 10 it'd be it would be get really sketchy by the end of it but we can certainly do it just, yeah, we'll try and if you're like yeah eh. we don't we don't need to have a full long discussion as we get further down the board and uh Fair. but let's let's do um so yeah i think number one running back for me I'll be con- I'll be controversial, I guess, because I think almost everybody has the same number one running back, and I don't. For me, it's Trey okay. Benson is my number one running back. Tra- um, am I following that right, Trey Benson? Yeah, you are. I might change my mind on that. Mostly, this is like a big, fast running back. Cool <laughs> take. Like, I just think there's not a lot of running backs in this class that are overly polished and put together and have all the attributes that you'd want out of a fantasy superstar. So to me, if I'm taking the shot on somebody, it's like uh, there's guys who never catch any passes guys who are way too small. There's guys who are coming off an ACL tear, or there's the guy who like people think he doesn't have good vision. And, and I guess like, I just think that's the one that we're most likely to be wrong about or to not matter. So I look at Benson. He has prototypical size, six feet, uh, we'll see what he weighs in. I think he's probably going to be about 210, 215. Um, has a ton of home run speed. Like there's, you'll see if, if you end up watching him, he'll, he has like some of those like S curving runs through the field that go 70 yards on screen passes or handoffs that like bring back warm memories of Adrian Peterson and such. His major issue is like, he's kind of brain dead behind the line of scrimmage. Like there's the first run that I watched of him was against Florida in which he like do it was doing like a, DeAndre Swift caricature impersonation of like running directly sideways, seeing a defender running directly backwards, doing a full lap around the field, like going down for a loss of 10. And that's the kind of stuff that people won't like. But look, look at an example like Kenneth Walker, for instance, who does dumb shit all the time. And teams have decided it didn't matter because they invested around to pick in him and he creates enough big plays that they think it's worth it. I don't know that Benson has like the same level of tackle breaking ability and power that Walker has, but I think he is adept enough as a pass catcher, at least as like a swing pass and screen game option. And he's big enough and fast enough that I think if a team believes in him, there's something there. Um, And so that would be the guy where if if there's going to be a home run, especially from a best ball perspective, I think it's him. We'll see what he gets draft capital wise. He's projected to go like round three. Maybe someone talks him into round two, but that's, that's, that's my guy so far. Um. I would say draft capital wise too, that is a, like any, any formula that like weights draft capital 
has to take into account that a second round running back running back from like five years ago is now a third round pick or yeah. a third round pick is now a fourth round pick. So guys are just naturally going down. Um, and yeah, I was going to ask you what round do you think he's going to go in? So you think the third round? I think he'll go late two or into the third. I w- I'm hoping for a late two, but I think third is probably the most likely for almost all these guys. And this is a, a weird year with running back, at least big board wise, because the first rookie running back off the board isn't until the 10th round of the fantasy draft, which is just yeah. not something we're used to. So, and every year there's surprise picks, right? Like James Cook was a surprise second rounder. Um, yeah. It, is there anything, and I guess you should mention, like if any of these guys do anything combine wise, if it would like tank them or improve them as we go. Who, who is well, I'm hoping, role? I'm hoping for, I'm hoping that Benson runs like a four breaks four, four, and weighs at 215. That's that's my, my that would be a we'll that's like that JT shit, you know. Like, we'll see if that happens. I don't know what's gonna happen. I would project that he runs like low four fours, though. Like, and I think he'll come in above 210. So maybe maybe this will be a bad take, but I, I think he's got legit wheels. We'll see. Okay. Um, who's your 102? And is it most people's 101? Yeah, it probably is. I still struggle with it in best ball because like I don't even I just I'm not convinced that he's like a special prospect and he's coming off an ACL and he's going to be a rookie. So I, I, I find it to be a difficult pick, but I still will put him two here with Jonathan Brooks. Um, I do think he's probably technically the best running back in the class. If he didn't have the ACL tear, I would have him one. Um, I think that when he, was the ACL tear, like, is he playing right away? Is he going to need to sit a while? No, it was late. I mean, and they're saying that he's going to be ready by training camp, but training camp seven and a half months post ACL. So I just like, don't buy that. Um, I, I think it's, I, I think it's possible that he's playing by week one, but like, I mean, this is, this I'll, is a Benson's one over thing under, when it's brief. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I think he can, I think he's going to blaze. Um, so Brooks, like it's one thing when it's Brees Hall and I already know he's like a freak of nature to bet on the ACL tear and he started slow, right. And it, it took him a while. And he tore it well earlier in the year than Brooks did. And like, now you're asking me to bet on a rookie who we don't know is good, who tore it later. It's like kind of like for who, for what to me. Um, but maybe I'm even talking myself to wreck him lower, but I just, I don't want to be a hater because I do think he's a good player. My other big issue with Brooks on the field is tall guy. I think he'll probably come in at six feet and he was listed. I saw 207. I wouldn't be surprised if he's closer to 202. Three to a four to a five. We'll see. I mean, his weight's honestly probably going to be high because he doesn't have to run. So he's just going to probably, like, he has torn ACL. So he may as well eat a bunch of cheeseburgers and come yeah. in at 212. I, I don't believe that's what he'll play at. Um, and you see that upright, kind of thin style at the goal line. Like, I, I've seen him on short yardage carries, doesn't really have a lot of power. My my comp for him is Tony Pollard, halfway between the good version and the wash version, um, which is basically like he has that kind of gliding style that I think of with like Pollard or Jones or Gibbs, where it doesn't even seem like they're running at full speed, but they just have really strong contact balance. They have strong angles that they're able to pick up big chunk plays. So I like him, and and I think he's probably of the, of the more prototypical backs in this class, definitely the best receiving option. So I think he'll be a good player. I'm not convinced on the goal line roll. I'm super not convinced on the health. Um, but I, I do think he's like a, a sound running back. And he seems like he's the best bet draft capital wise. Like it sounds like he's the one that's most likely to go round two, if anybody. So you don't think he's, he'll be dinged for the ACL draft capital wise? Um, yeah. I mean, would I take an ACL rookie running back in round two? No, but I, I just kind of trust what people are saying, I guess. And maybe I mean, people Project are Spears played without line. a knee or something like, right. right. Like, <laughs> um, yeah and i mean if you're an nfl team maybe you look at it and say well we don't care if he if we have to ease him in until week six of his rookie season like that doesn't matter that much from an nfl team perspective or even from a dynasty perspective but matters a lot from a best ball perspective if he's like unable to play till week four and then has to get healthy and then has to convince the team that he's good enough to play as a rookie right like when when does the breakout happen is, is kind of my concern and Ideally, he's that low advance rate smash in the fantasy playoffs. Um, and I can envision that. But you can also envision it's week eight and he 
just got back and he finally saw his 50% snap share for the first time. Oh, he sprained an ankle and then he's gone for four weeks and then he never gets back up to speed. And it's like a Kendra Miller situation. So, yeah. Um, I misstated when I said Kendra Miller's name earlier, I meant the fast guy on the Ravens. Um, yeah. Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Keaton Mitchell. Yeah. All right. Who's your one Oh, who's your one Oh three. Yeah. This is my boy, Bucky Irving, who I think is the best receiving back in the class. The fun part with him is I think he's going to clearly have a role. Like I uh, probably would, would, I don't know if I'd call him to Ty J Spears, but I think he could have a similar level role right away where I probably expect to go round three, maybe round four. But when you're this type of back where you're that kind of change of pace, speed, pass catching back, it's a lot easier to at least get on the field. Um, you're one. Whereas if you're kind of more of the straight backup, like a Tank Bigsby or Kendry Miller, you can just get totally wiped off the face of the earth you're one hey, of don't mention Tank way. Bigsby's name around me man <laughs> <laughs> it's like I saw a chart the other day where it's like guess the most inefficient season ever and it was like Tank Bigsby by like a mile <laughs> <laughs> yeah that guy I liked him too so uh unfortunate <laughs> but um luckily our ETN on our main event team that he was so unbelievably yeah. capable um, uh, but yeah, Bucky would be the guy. I think he's dynamic. He's going to be agile. I'm excited to see what he weighs in at slash anxious to see what he weighs in at currently listed 5'10, 195. So I'm not expecting a big oh, goal. line goal. That's like, that's uh, 185. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like, I, I would say this is kind of a similar take that I had about a Chan, although I feel it less with less conviction about Irving, mostly because he played in the pack 12. So you just a very different, um, system, but uh, the case that I kept making about HM was like, yes, he's small, but like if you look deep into his profile, if you watch him and if you look at the statistical profile, he doesn't profile like a small back. Like he actually has a high success rate. He actually forces his tackles at a strong rate. He has good vision. He knows how to run between the tackles. I feel somewhat similarly about Irving. The only thing that I'm lacking is with HM. I can also point and say like, and here's the proof. He had 40 carries against freaking LSU and the SEC. And like, look what he yeah. did against all the best athletes. With Irving, it's like, I think he has all the core competencies. He played against a bunch of Pac-12 teams that don't really play defense and whose defensive lines are very movable. So it's a little bit more of a projection. But I think at the very least, a like Ty J. Spears-esque rookie year where he starts to see 40 to 50% of the work, you're getting long down a distance, you're getting some plays drawn up for him. I think that's totally in the cards. And, you know, you flash a little bit and maybe then the starter goes down. All of a sudden, you get more of a look than maybe the coaches were intending. So uh, I'm excited about him. And the big thing that I would say in, in college, at least in the Pac-12, bell cow ish. And I would say if people look at his stats, especially this year, um, he was more bell cow ish than the stats will say. I know this because I have his backup um, uh, in my college fantasy league, and he was playable because Oregon blew teams out so frequently that. Uh, James would usually get like a few carries in the first half and then he'd get like the full third quarter once the game was like entirely out of reach. So there were a lot of games where Irving was seeing like 80% of the carries in the first half and would end the game with like 40% of the total touches because they were just putting teams completely on ice. Uh, he was, you know, he would, he would get some goal line work. There'd be a bit of a split. He would not get a ton of the pass for opportunities, but I think that he is, his profile statistically will look less Balcowie than how he was treated is, is what I would say. And I think that he is certifiably good at football, which I'm not very confident about for most of the rest of the running backs in this class. Okay. And the one Oh four. Yeah. This would be Blake Corum. Who's the other guy that I'm just really confident is good. Um, kind of a low ceiling pick. I like him way more in best ball than I do in dynasty. Uh, I think he is kind of like a Brian Robinson ish player where I feel very confident that he knows how to play the position. I feel a little less confident that he has the requisite athleticism to play it at a high level in the NFL, but he's a guy that's going to be able, he's, he has the best vision in the class, in my opinion. Like he always makes the right decisions. Um, his statistical profile, people that have only cited his 2023 numbers, especially like his breakaway runs, his missed tackles, forced, all that stuff. They're, they're citing his first year post um, massive knee injury. I believe it was a torn meniscus. And he was, uh, way down and but if you look at his 2022 and 2021 his efficiency was way higher and to me he looks mostly like the same running back in 2023 in terms of what he does well just a little bit less juice i expect that to hopefully come back year two off of that injury 
Sounds like he's probably going to get reasonable draft capital. And it's just easy, again, almost the opposite of Irving, but it's easy to see how he fits into an NFL system year one where you're just, okay, you're the guy we're going to get 15 carries to you. You're going to run in between the tackles. You're going to get it done. It was really never asked uh, to have any pass game responsibilities at Michigan. Uh, he played with Donovan Edwards, who's a really strong pass catching running back. So oh, is I don't this know the guy that like necessary. everyone mocks to the Chargers? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I I, I could see it. <laughs> like Harbaugh yeah. loves this guy. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he was the Chargers. Well, and that'd be honestly a pretty good landing spot fantasy wise. It'd be incredible. Um, yeah. Okay, one oh five. Yeah, this is where we start to get a little bit um, sketchy in terms of guys that I don't necessarily know if they're good or not, but I would probably go with Marshawn Lloyd here, uh, who's back at the USC and, you know, never saw a particularly dominant workload in college, which is also true of uh, Benson at the top and kind of a similar story, I guess, where I see him as like more of a slasher, potential big play threat, a little bit unsure of whether he can put it all together, a little bit unsure of in the passing game. But I think it's a guy that has juice um, and a guy that I expect has a reasonable chance of going in like round three and has some uh, pretty impressive athletic ability and I think has a potential to be an upside swing. So I would go with him fifth and then just like the slightly smaller version of, I think, a similar profile in terms of slasher with big playability would be Jalen Wright, who I um, mentioned earlier would be my sixth. And just fast hope he's big yeah fast and he's not big um and he's and and I, and he's runs with a little power but he's, he's fast that's kind of like what i would say it's like like if you think of like college rojo or like a Miles sanders like that's kind of what i think of with right it's like i don't know that he has much other than being able to run straight through an open hole really fast but that's that's something and it's something that the nfl yeah, hey, highly. guys who scheme in the nfl like that um yeah seven eight and nine throw some darts yeah, I'll put Estime at seven uh, out of Notre Dame. Estime like that? Yeah, uh, that's exactly like that. Yeah. Oh, and I see I see someone in the chat wanting Estime love. So there's your Estime love. I could put him as high as five, really. Like I, I don't I don't feel a whole lot um, of difference between uh, five and beyond. Um, but yeah, solid back. Uh, after that, I'll go with uh will shipley who i have no clue what kind of draft capital he's going to get so maybe this is uh dangerous but i would say probably the second best pass catching running back in the class the guy who can actually run routes the guy who can actually be a weapon virtually no faith in him um as a runner but that could be a, a role early on um I, I guess that i'll begrudgingly put braylon allen nine he's <laughs> like my least favorite running back <laughs> in the class but i know some people have him as high as one um uh, really He's really large and he has a great production profile. So I totally understand why a lot of nerds like him a lot. I just, I don't know. I just don't think he can play. I think he's slow. I think he has no lateral agility. I think he just, all he can do is like kind of tumble forward. Uh, like a, like a best case is like a post Achilles Deontay Foreman type Trent guy Richardson. for me. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, I don't know, man. I just don't see any pop to his game at all. So I don't like him, but uh Totally acknowledge that he could go round three and at least he'll probably have potential goal line responsibilities. And then uh, RB10, like it's kind of a boring pick. I'd probably just put Ray Davis here, uh, who's like just another kind of generic SEC, you can handle the workload guy. If you want someone really fun who shouldn't be on anyone's RB10, but who I, my personal little side crush is Isaiah Davis uh, out of South Dakota State, um, who you should not be drafting at all in best ball. But uh, if you just want one fun name that I kind of like, uh, extremely productive. Uh, he's listed at 220 pounds, cut over 20 receptions as well. Uh, that's exactly the kind of guy you're mentioning of like, how do we ever know if this guy's good? He played at South Dakota State, but uh, I find him intriguing. Hey, I drafted a lot yeah, of... I love A2. I drafted a lot of that giant wide receiver who ended up on the Giants practice squad. Um, Colin Johnson? No. Uh, he was a rookie last year. He was like in the big board mix and then totally like he won undrafted. Uh, I got to look this up. Hmm. Giants pra practice squad wide receivers. Someone help me out if they, if they know. He was, he was like big. I drafted a lot of him in the big board. Um, I, I was like hoping he'd be like DK Metcalf. No, he's a wide receiver. He was a wide receiver. Um, let's see. 
He's huge. Let's see. I don't really got anything for you here. Maybe he's on the actual team. Giants team NFL. All right. If I can't find it, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on here. Maybe he went to Mississippi. Uh, no, not Leggett. Bryce Ford Wheaton. Yes, yes. Bryce. Oh, yes, I do vaguely remember that. Name. Bryce Ford, Bryce Ford Wheaton. Wheaton. Thank you, wow. thank you. So, I drafted enough of him. I'll take a share of Isaiah Davis. Um, yeah. And, right, uh, I right saw out. Dylan. I saw Dylan Lob or Lobe or Lobe or whatever it is. Uh, it'd be I'd be the same idea as Isaiah Davis to me is like a guy that is fantasy friendly on the off chance that he gets drafted um, at all, <laughs> or like or or maybe somewhere early in day three. I like him too. Fair. So wide receiver. Um, I hear rumblings that this is a pretty deep wide out class. How would you compare it to previous the previous two years? I mean, it's it's super deep, and like honestly, a lot of my wide receiver takes are a little bit secondary knowledge. Like I have far less of a first hand take with the wide receivers than I do That's with fine. the running backs. But it's, I mean, the perception is that we could see like fifteen wide receivers in like the first two rounds. Like <laughs> that's how like insane this could be. So. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty nuts. Like I, I expect that we'll see as many as six or seven in round one, and we might see that many again in round two, and we might see another suite of that many in round three. Like you get, you get, you can get really, really deep and find guys that players still like. Like I'm pulling up, for instance, the PFF draft board right now, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, 21. They have 21 wide receivers that would go on day one or day two. Um, based so on their top 60, in top 64. Or day one or day two. So like in their top oh, 100. Top. Okay. But uh, yeah, so it's pretty crazy. And you can find guys that people like even outside of that. So it's, it's going to be a really, really deep class. There's going to be a pipe for everybody. Um, I think it's it's interesting that there's like a kind of a consensus top three and then a semi consensus, like, I don't know, four to nine to 10 ish. And then after that, like everybody take your pick, really. Yeah. And I mean, you got teams at the top who need wide out. You got teams at the bottom who do like the Bills and the Chiefs. So we could see him fly off. We looked at the Daniel Jeremiah mock top 50 or whatever. And I think he had 12 wide outs in his top 50. Um, yeah. so let's get to it. 101. I'm assuming you're not bucking the trend here. Marvin. Yeah. I, here. not much to say. Here. I, yeah. I mean, I didn't run, not running the combine. So probably a bust. <laughs> yeah. I'm like half tempted to be a hot take artist. Cause I like neighbors so much, but I, I, I'm not going to do it. I I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the hot taker for clicks. Um, I have no reason to doubt Marvin Harrison jr. Whatsoever. And Everybody that knows everything, anything seemingly loves him. So I, I love neighbors individually very, very much. And I don't think that there's that big of a gap between them. And like, if this fucking dynasty and someone was like, what would it take you to move from Harrison to neighbors? Probably wouldn't take me as much as it would a lot of people, but that's, that's all because of my love of neighbors. I think Marvin seems like a complete and total stud. Um, maybe for, at least from the people who, who scout this stuff more rigorously, the take is like a little bit larger frame. A little bit better and contested, a little bit more of an ability to hold up to press versus neighbors who is a little bit more reliant on explosion and might be pressed out potentially. And I also heard that I believe neighbors like got thrown beautiful deep balls, and Marvin Harrison Jr. was like adjusting to to like poorly thrown balls. Yeah, um, I mean, I would say like if you if you even just turn on like the just bombs production of Malik neighbors, I think it's, they had a mutually beneficial relationship and that like, I think he was turning a lot of 50, 50 balls into 80, 20 balls. But I also give Daniels credit for throwing 50, 50 balls frequently 50 yards down the field. So I think, I think they, they helped each other out quite a bit this year as that, did the other member of that offense. That's fair. If he is a Cardinal over under uh, nine and a half touchdowns for Harrison. Yeah. Uh, High number. I mean, prob probably. I'm just gonna say under. That seems like the safe play, but that's kind of boring. Um, 
I I'll think, say, I'll say I think over. that tends like very realistically. Yeah, like, totally realistic. Totally realistic. Addict, Addison just did it last year. How about if he's a know. Patriot? <laughs> is how much is uh, that over under five and a half touchdowns? Seven and a half. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, the um, problem is that if he's a Patriot, then their quarterback really sucks, right? Like, because then we know they well, don't I have think they'll sign like Russ. Like they'd sign like Russ as like the bridge, maybe. I guess. Yeah. Although maybe they'd be uh, too good with that. I don't know. All right, so yeah. two two sounds like neighbors for you. Neighbors for me. Uh, nothing against the Dunes. It's just like neighbors clicks every possible analytical production box. And when I watch him, like the first time that I watch him, I was like, this guy looks like a complete superstar. Like he's just so unbelievably electric and explosive and springy. Um, yeah, I think I think he could. I think he's gonna. I think in the my prediction is in the first month of the season, he's gonna have like a two hundred yard game and people are going to lose their minds um because i, I yeah. just an absolute big play waiting to happen i think he's going to have an incredible career yeah and i you know like neighbors went at the like two three turn in my last big board um god that's and, so frustrating like if this was like five years ago we could have got this guy like round six yeah and then the this the third guy um adunzie or however i say yeah, that Adunze, he didn't go yeah. until like the fourth or fifth which just seems like a huge gap for what their draft uh, capital difference will be the dream is neighbors goes to the chargers so i don't think greg roman and jim harbaugh are gonna let us have the dream oh god uh all right so 103 <laughs> yeah uh, i do say for sure i it's uh you know like i think is that because an I'm, o or an a and is it's it an o thing? it's rome as in like the the city and then o d u n z e okay yeah. um yeah it's nothing against him like i think i'm just i like neighbors it's probably the one that I have the biggest stand on relative consensus. That just means for me, it's kind of closer to Marvin and further away from Adunze. But I, I still think Adunze is great. His analytical profile is like a little bit more meh than the other guys. But he's playing with two other NFL wide receivers in Washington. Um, so I think that's somewhat excusable. He's a senior, but we've seen that kind of lose some signal over the years. as We've had some big hits like Devonta Smith and Chris Olave. So I, I think he's strong. And he's also like the proto typical X receiver. I mean, and there's NFL guys, like I think it's Daniel Jeremiah who has him like his second overall player in the entire class. So uh, he has a lot of fans in big he's NFL doing media. Seems like, shit, top man. Like, like he's saying like the 49ers should get rid of Ayuk and to re-sign their fullback and their linebacker who tore his Achilles. I'm like, <laughs> the fuck is this? Um, all right. You're one of, you're one of four. The, I, yeah. I think this is, this is where I feel like the take having be, be, begins. Like it's kind yeah. of where it gets interesting to me. That's yeah. So, say. so for me, and especially if we're just talking best ball, then that makes things even a little bit easier. And it's Brian Thomas jr. Who um, has the potential to be like a big uh, NFL combine champion. Like he, he would be the guy that we potentially walk out a week from now and say, oh my God, he was 6'3", he was 210, he ran a 434. Like, can you believe this guy? Um, it's it's nuts how many times you're watching LSU games and Brian Thomas is like roasting a DB by like 10 yards down the sideline. He's an absolute size speed demon. I think he has really strong ball skills. I have no idea in terms of the intricacies of this game. Like, I don't know that he's going to be like a possession receiver. I don't know that he's going to have a 20... 3% target share as a rookie. But in terms of we play the best ball game and we want a big dude who can catch contested balls and can burn down the field for 70 yard touchdowns. Like I think he's bringing that on day one and he's going to have round one draft capital in all likelihood. Uh, and is he's going to go he's Terrace Marshall or is, or does he feel safe? I think he is, you know, there's always a chance, right? There's always a chance. I think he's more explosive than Terrace Marshall. Um, almost certainly. Uh, but you know, I kind of like the Terrace wide Marshall, receiver. So you, I'm not gonna, know? I'm not gonna like pretend that uh, that I didn't like Terrace Marshall because I did. So, um, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to play the I game of like here's in my, my Discord. <laughs> Sorry, I got some Terrace Marshall truthers still in my Discord. <laughs> yeah, no, Terrace Marshall was like easily one of the like most wrong takes I've ever had. So it would be disingenuous of me to play the game of like, here's why this guy is so foreseeably better than Terrace Marshall, because I thought he would work out. Um, the the scary thing of the profile is that it's, is that he basically didn't do anything for a couple of years and then did something later. And I guess if I was to push up against that, it would be like, he was a big recruit. Like I've had him on my Debbie team since he was a freshman. Like he was a guy that was on my radar who just didn't really do anything. Um, 
and in large part because LSU always has guys in front of guys. And he got his opportunity this year, and it kind he might be a little bit quarterback dependent, like because I think he does have a somewhat narrower set of skills. But I compare him versus Franklin, who's kind of the other big deep threat. And I think what is more impressive about Thomas is going to be more prototypically built than Franklin, where I think it's going to be easier for him to beat press coverage on the outside, where coaches are going to trust him lining up on the outside. And as I think a much better ball winner, like Franklin's just going to come in really skinny. I think Franklin's going to have to rely on separation. Whereas with Thomas, I've seen him do it both ways where he can win when the ball's in the air and he can get separation with his speed. So that would be the the four for me and a great, he's going to be better in best ball for life. Like, I don't know. He could be like a, I'm trying to think of an example. Like a souped up Gabe Davis, it sounds like, or. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, I like, I hope he's better than Gabe Davis. Um, I think he's like, well, he'll be faster, at least. I'm trying to think of like T. Higgins, but combined with someone else, because he's probably like not quite as good at contested catches as T, but he's definitely faster than T. Higgins. So I don't know, something in that realm. Hmm. Okay. And the 105? Uh 105 for me, again, it's best ball. So like we want we want downfield receivers when we're talking about rookies, because I think you want the outs of even if this guy isn't great, he can still get me 20 points in a playoff week. And so yeah, that's I mean, that like changed towards. a little bit with the cover two, but then it came back to at the end of this, like that didn't come to be for Jalen Hyatt, you know, like, no, but I think Hyatt was a worse profile than these guys um, for sure. Like, but demonstrably so. And also like his quarterback in the fantasy class was like Tommy DeVito. And maybe if he yeah, had, but Darius Slayton was doing good. it. So like, that's, you yeah. know, that's true. That's true. Uh, I'll go with Troy Franklin though. I mean, I think strong, strong profile to me. The only major issue with him is just the weight. Um, we'll see what he weighs in at. If he comes in at like six, three and one seventy five, that's just like sketchy. <laughs> Jesus man. That is not good. <laughs> so, so, uh, the weight's a big question mark, but dude's got wheels. Hands are also a question mark. So I think like, Thomas, I feel, brings a little bit more to the table where I'd be pretty surprised if he was straight up bad. I think Franklin's a little more boom busty, where if he doesn't add much, like he might be purely a rotational deep threat. Like that would be the fear is that he is more of like a high or a MIMS. I don't think that's out of the question. But like I'm trusting the production profile um, of a guy who's probably going to get round one draft capital and fits the archetype, and he, he would come in at five for me. And then six for me... Probably Lad Bakonki, where if you want your cover two beater, this would be the yeah, I've, cover I've two heard beater. Some, uh, some Puka comps a little bit. Like if, if someone's going to be that, it could be this guy. Well, the one thing you really share with Puka is that his raw production profile looks not very impressive. But when you leave uh, the yards per team pass attempt and you go down to yards per route run, it gets massively, massively better. And that was something that was similar with Puka Nakua. Uh, and I think a part of that is just kind of some injury, some George is blowing people out, some they're kind of weird with rotating personnel around. Um, yeah, I mean, this this would be a guy where I feel like a much higher floor pick than like a Troy Franklin and that I, I think he clearly can play the position. The issue is the threshold for how good you need someone to be uh, is a little bit higher when we're talking about a guy that I think is more likely to be a more intermediate player, right? You kind of can get stuck in that JSN mold where it's like, oh, like he's always out there and he never gets any targets above seven yards. So what's really the point of this guy? Um, but I, I think he can play ball and it's interesting. And he's he's a guy that really fits, I think, where the NFL is heading in terms of how he plays. Um, Bindles, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Just got to get, got to run, go get a donair on me. Nice. Enjoy. Um, The 107. Okay, uh, this one, this one's gonna just be my my fun pick. Um, where I have a take. You, you've on not said some guys guy. I've I've heard buzz about, like um, Worthy. I think is one, and yeah, and I'll and I'll and I'll list him. But this would be maybe my if I have a flag plant in the wide receiver group, it's probably this guy, which would be Jalen McMillan. Okay. Um, he's McMillan a guy that friend? actually, yes, yeah, no, no, why? But otherwise, you're you're golden. Yeah, spelling is a uh, spelling is up to interpretation for these names. He's a guy who uh, who got injured, missed part of the season. But prior to his injury, when he was playing alongside Polk and Adunze, was drawing the most targets. Was the most efficient of the three. Another guy who I think 
has the opportunity to be that yak yards after catch intermediate threat um, that can fit that sort of cover two era uh, that we're in right now in the NFL. I we'll see what happens with the draft capital. I think he has a decent chance of going round two. I probably wouldn't draft him this way, like right now in best ball, because other guys who just have a better chance of going ahead and you should click on ADP. But I feel like I've just like gone down the chalk at all these positions. So this would be the one guy where I think the injury that he went through partway through his Washington career really clouded how productive he was next to two other surefire round one. I mean, one of the maybe top 10 and another guy is probably going to go round two, round three and pull. So McMillan would be my guy here at seven. Um, and maybe a bit of a flag plant. And then I'll uh, I'll round out with your the guys you've probably heard of or hear a lot about. Oh, okay. Who, who is that? Yeah, I'll go to the two Texas guys. Uh, so I'll go Mitchell first, Worthy second. Um, What's Mitchell's first name? A.D. or Adnay. A.D. Mitchell? Yeah. Okay. And then Xavier Worthy? Yeah. Well, my concern with Worthy is like, maybe I'm just scarred, but how many times... Uh, are we going to do the thing of like, oh, it's the small guy who has a really high yards per team pass attempt. And then the NFL is like, we're going to draft him in round two. He fucking sucks. Like, I just feel like we've done, I just feel like we've done this, like Elijah Moore, Wondell Robinson, Rondale Moore, KJ Hamler, Marvin Mims. Like, I just feel like we've done this so many times and it's like never once worked that I'm just kind of tired of like having all my fellow nerds of the world being like, uh, actually, Xavier Worthy has the higher yards per route run of the rest of the picks, and he should be going higher. Uh, I'm just kind of over it. Uh, where, like, if the NFL drafts this guy, like, if the NFL is going to draft one of these guys, like, legit high, fuck it. I'm, I'm super in. But for as long as the NFL is just like, eh, then I'm, I'm going to stay kind of in. So I like Mitchell a little bit more. I think it's more prototypical. Is, more is Worthy like a burner? Uh, I we'll see what he runs. I, I, I'm not sure that he's going to be like super fast. He's fast, but okay. like in terms of a guy who weighs 160 pounds, like, I don't know if he's <laughs> going to be in the four twos. Yikes. Um, pop quiz for you. Do you know what team signed KJ Hamler to the practice squad or to a f- futures? I think, uh, well, he's with the Colts for a minute. Is he still with the Colts? No, I believe he's a, he's a Buffalo bill. Is he a Buffalo Bill? Oh, yeah, awesome. which is like kind of exciting because they gave they I mean they gave minutes to um they gave minutes to who's the really small guy from Mass that everyone loves? Hardy? No. Uh small white wide receiver from UMass, like really fast. Oh, Andy is Bella? Yes, they gave like some <laughs> minutes to him. Yeah, I like that guy too. <laughs> so like maybe it works out, you know. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, Mitchell's I'm more, here just more prototypical wide out. A little more prototypical, a little less productive, but more of a downfield option, more of a red zone option. Um, and yeah, I think he's uh he'll probably get he'll probably get the higher draft capital of the two, almost certainly. Where where and does then, the first round end for you, by the way, in these ranks? Well, I think that all of the top five are gonna go round one. McMillan won't. I, I just like him. Um McConkey might. Mitchell might. And then the other guy who I think has a reasonable chance of going around one is Keon Coleman, who I guess I'll put him 10. Yeah, that's the name I've heard too. Ke- yeah. Ke- Keon Coleman. Yeah, I mean, he's like the – like if, if Xavier Worthy is the prototypical prospect that the analytics gets wrong for liking too much, Keon Coleman is the prototypical prospect that the analytics usually gets right for not liking, <laughs> which is like he's – not very productive. He's like a high contested catch rate player. Like a, a lot of his appeal is from like athletic ability and yak. Um, been at two different schools, and it's it's good. He's he's sort of like the prototypical. If this was three years ago, everybody been like, oh, you don't draft Keon Coleman, and then he still would have gone too high. And now it's like everybody hates Keon Coleman. It's not cool anymore to hate Keon Coleman. All of the things that people don't like about him is probably going to be priced in. He's going to be a perfectly reasonable pick, but he's he's like the like the, every year there's like the one guy that the analyst means like ah oh, boo, and he'd be the guy this year, like the Henry Ruggs or the Kadarius Tony or whatever else. Okay, um, yeah. I mean, those Shout guys were Ricky kind of like, those guys were fun. My, like the, the, you could squint and see it with those guys. You know? Oh, for sure. He has he has like legit athletic juice. Like you watch him, like he has legit after the catch ability. Uh, people have like really talked off his contested catch ability. The stats don't show that he's a particularly great contested catch player, but uh, I know some of the film community feels better about that. 
Um, we'll see. It's definitely like if there's if there's like a Quentin, if there's I think I think she's gonna be hated even more than usual because he has a lot of profile similarities to Quentin Johnston. That hey, that is that and like is we're all reason. we're all just like living in the Quentin Johnston like pain right now. So we're like, we don't want to do this shit again. I mean, is he gonna even like play next year? Like I, I, I have don't no know. idea. You know, I think like, he's basically is he, toast. Is he getting like Sky Mord? Um he's he's getting I think worse than Sky Mord, because at least with Sky Moore, you could say like well, they never let him play, so he's probably bad. But you can't say for sure. Versus Quentin Johnston, like they tried to not let him play, and then they they couldn't yeah. not let him play anymore because all the other players got hurt. So they like begrudgingly let him play, and then he was so bad they were like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're gonna go back to playing Alex Erickson or whoever else was like the the rest of the receivers that they benched him for." Um, it would be a stunning turn of events if Quentin Johnston was good at this point, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, less so than Sky Moore, though, I guess, because at least he got to, like, see the field, but, like, for good reason. Would you rather Would you rather someone see the field and be horrendous than not see the field at all? I think I'd rather not see the field at all. I, I don't know. At least I can, like, hope that he gets faster, which doesn't <laughs> happen, but... Can he learn to catch? Yeah, yeah, yes, you can improve that. <laughs> knock, yeah. knock someone to a hand eye specialist like that. Yeah, it I mean, I'll say this: it's like, like I didn't. I'll say this for Coleman. Um, I didn't like Quentin Johnston. He was not not my kind of prospect. Um, but I totally acknowledge the upside, and I drafted him a little bit. And he is his was priced far closer to that upside than Keon Coleman will be. Who I think is a pretty similar prospect, but I think, every, you know, we pattern match all the time in the fantasy community. Like one of my, like so many times there's something that happens that goes really well and really bad. And then a somewhat similar thing looks like it's happening the next year and everybody way overreacts to what just happened. Oh, yeah. Right. One, one of the great examples I bring uh, up for this uh, that I've written about a lot is Brandon. Ayuk has that crazy rookie season where everybody gets hurt and he goes completely berserk over the second half of the season. And we all get really excited and then the second season, he gets doghoused and it's a disaster. And then, and at the time, of course, we didn't know that he was going to completely turn his career back around and be awesome. Uh, we just thought, oh, he's not that good. And then Amon Ross St. Brown has kind of the same deal the next year. He starts off really slow. Everybody gets hurt. He crushes down the stretch. And so many people were saying, like, you can't draft Amon Ross St. Brown. Look what just happened to Brandon Ayuk. We all just learned you can't draft the rookie wide receiver who only gets hot when everybody else gets hurt. And it's like, Everything is its own individual circumstance. You can't just pattern match. St. Brown goes on to totally smash. We later learn that the precedent for this take, Ayuk, was actually really good the whole time and has been a hit every other year of his career other than that one year that we use. Um, and so what I would say to this is I don't like Coleman in a vacuum, but there's elements of uncertainty to every single profile. And like, the price in which we get to take that upside swing is going to be way more palatable than with Quentin Johnson. So I don't like him. I'm not going to be victory lapping him if he's good, but I'm not going to be the, I'm, I'm not going to be the guy saying like, I'm a hundred percent certain this guy is total trash. Cause I, I think that we get too far ahead of ourselves with that. This is my favorite question to ask every guest. What round would you draft Quentin Johnson this year in best ball? Probably like the 16th. <laughs> Davis originally said the twelfth or something, and then he would not. Like, a he was like on the, and I was like, "Well, Quentin Johnson is here in the 14th. He's like, "No." <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so tight end, we got Bowers. The second guy's Sanders, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be the guy. And he's, and then, he's gonna is there be anyone like, else even worth mentioning? I mean, there's guys that I think are like worth drafting in like dynasty, but in terms of a best ball tight end like there's nobody else who's even projected to go in the first three rounds so yeah like the the idea of taking a day three rookie tight end and i know nobody loves rookie tight ends as much as you but i don't know if i don't even i don't even know if you find that appealing <laughs> taking a day three rookie tight end well i have ball. seen some negative buzz about bowers so if that puts him down in price <laughs> like, i will nice. i will be i will be buying but you know he's priced like around kittle well, thank yeah. you, Jacob, for taking your time to give us your ranks. Do you have time to rip a big board, or should we just end it here? Let's rip a big board. Let's rip one. All right. 
Let's rip this bad boy. I'm going to refill my water while we get this bad boy filled. Oh. And this, I don't know what's happening with Florida. This could be my last draft uh, in Florida or, or not. In Florida? I guess we'll, uh, Florida is, oh God, I got to update my app on my phone. Um, I've heard I some no people have said. I always assumed you lived in Buffalo. No, I, I live in Florida. Some people were sent a email from Underdog saying that only the Pick'em product is being taken away, which would be fine. Um, but I've not gotten that email, so I don't know. I don't know why that is or or what. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully everything's fine though. But yeah, I guess we'll. I'll find out tomorrow when I try to enter a draft if I'm able to or not. All right, this bad boy filled. I'm running to get my water. I'll be right back. Oh, shit. We pulled the 101. Oh, wow. Sweet. Okay. All right, I gotta. Oh, do you want CMC or someone else? Quick. Oh, uh, CMC's fine with me, unless you have a big, strong take about it. No. All right. Good. We auto that. Um, I don't. I mean, my take is that it's not comfortable. Oh, look, we got who's who drafted in here. We got Justin in here. Um, oh, holy smokes! And then a bunch of badges. I grabbed a beer because I don't often night draft. Why not? Oh, I'm gonna grab a beer too. Then good call. Um. All right, I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna grab a glass for my beer since we got this pick. Absolutely, bro. I did not TMS, but maybe I did actually. My take with um, CMC is like, you, you just kind of have to throw up your hands and do it, but to like get some exposure. But as far as, you know, part of what we're looking for is safety when you're picking mm -hmm. at, the, at the top of the draft. And like when we compare him to like CD Lamb, like CeeDee Lamb feels like infinitely safer to me. Yeah. A running back who's now going to be 28 who has a bunch of touches, you know? Yeah, I mean, realistically, like I didn't – I not not like 0% hard fade, but I pretty hard faded CMC last year in favor of mostly Tyreek Hill. Um, and so in theory, there's no real reason why I should not do that again this year. Like, I don't think any of the calculus has particularly changed about him versus those top wide receivers. Um, I, I guess most of it has just been I've barely been drafting, frankly. And so when I do get the one-on-one, I'm just kind of like registering my table stakes of CMC. And then I'll probably take larger stands about it as we get more into the draft season. And I've spent more time thinking about it. Um, I do agree and especially agree that Right now, what I find with receiver is like it gets thin quick, but then there's still receivers I want all the way to the end of the draft. Yeah. So my like preference 
and it's kind of a hard thing to navigate is like to not be taking a lot of wide receivers in like the rounds like seven to ten zone where they're pretty sad um to get my good wide receivers early but not go too overboard so that i can still take two or three very late so yeah i mean the draft overall feels a lot deeper to me um and like i mean i did like a an etn and jt running back start and like then double hit like kincaid and um the arizona guy mcbride and so like i just kind of like punted i and like with puka and i still felt good enough about my wide receiver room so like it it does it it dries up as far as like the cd lambs of the world but it's still pretty deep wide out wise compared to years past um and then tyreek is the other one who it's like i mean he's just older than these guys right like yeah okay jefferson has questions because we don't know his quarterback is and but tyreek it's like when will he lose a step um mm -hmm. and then cmc is just yeah it's the age like chase i have next to no questions lamb next to no um you know so i don't know it's it's a if if cmc just remains the 101 the whole year then yeah I, i'll just I mean, take you, him when i get it if i knew cousins was the quarterback of minnesota then jefferson is like definitely my 101 i think i think i think that's fair too yeah um and because like dallas is like dallas could add another wide out in the draft which would be you know just like if they add yeah. another top guy Rasheed Rice is like kind of tough for me at the two three. Um, all right, we're on yeah, the that's, I think borderline egregious. Um, okay, so I've tended to like Olave here. I've tended to like I don't mind Dell here. Um, I don't even mind Waddle here. Um, yeah, I mean, I like, know. there's not a lot separating these wide receivers. We could do the Allen Dig stack. We could do I like Dell a lot. Oh, um, Olave just went. That sucks. Uh, so Okay, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably, of the wide receivers, those would be the three, well, I don't know about Diggs, but I'll leave that to you. You're the Buffalo guy. What Do you do you have, do you have? think Diggs is going to bounce back, or is he toast? Yes, I think he will, uh, well, who, who do you want to take first? Let's do Dell. That's probably the one that I, I think we okay. can probably both agree on if I had to we'll guess. We'll take Dell. So we're not, we're not doing the Allen Diggs stack then. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, Diggs' is like floor is being like, a one a tied with like Kincaid and Shakir plus slash whatever high draft pick rookie they had. But I think he hurt his core against the Jaguars and then played through it. Like, I don't think he like slowed down. Um, yeah. Cause like I could see, I could see anything with Diggs. Like I could see a scenario where he's just the Stefan Diggs that he was the entire rest of the time in Buffalo. And it was insane that we got him in round three. Um, and it makes no sense. Or, I could see, see feeling equally stupid where it's like, oh, like you mean the really old guy who looks completely washed for half the season is in fact washed? Like, why did we take him in round three? Like, I could see it kind of going in either direction, which means I guess I think he's appropriately priced. But um, yeah, and I think I think both Barkley and Etienne would have been fine picks too. It's just with the way that I'm guessing this room is going to go, and having started with Christian McCaffrey, I felt like registering two receivers there felt like the easier way to navigate the rest of our. our yeah, lives. I mean, going running back wide out wide out is just such a safe way to start almost any draft ever but yeah i mean like my hope and guess is that the like gabe davis is gone and so the bills are going to likely either add a first round wide out or a second round wide out yeah and so then you're dealing with second year kincaid third year shakir who seemed to also really gain the trust yeah he really came Plus, we're dealing with Joe Brady's potential. First thing about to spin it back to year one here and do a little hyper fragile running back. Like he, I could feel him eyeing up Etienne Barkley right now and thinking about the, yeah, there it is. There yeah. It is. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah back to roots. Draft like this, but you, yeah, you're also dealing with the potential of Joe Brady, just like running a lot, like James Cook being the main fantasy guy in Buffalo. And that's, I hate Joe Brady so much. And that's kind of like, who knows what the Joe Brady offense looks like when he gets to actually design it versus pivoting mid-year. Like, it does seem yeah. like James Cook is going to be a huge part of the plans. At the same Certainly. time, you know, I don't know. Like, Diggs, I, I really truly believe Diggs hurt his core significantly against the Jags in London. 
and then just played through it. And so, you know, like, and he was like lighting it up to start the year. And then that happened. He was. Yeah. So it was, it was like such a weird start to the year where it's like AJ Brown and Steph Diggs versus CD lamb. Like AJ Brown and Diggs started electric and mm-hmm. lamb started slow. And then they like flipped. Yeah. And yeah. And, and I do think Diggs the play style should lead to longevity. Um, what about Devonte Adams? How like him I've been drafting a lot of him. Yeah, he seems yeah. like pretty good price. He also, I mean, that's from a best ball perspective. Like, I mean, even last year, which was you know a down year for Adams overall, really didn't affect his ceiling. Like, it, it really it, what it really did was it hurt his floor because he had some total dud games, but he still had massive, massive games, including in Week 17. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, the rest of it didn't quite fall according to plan. But, like, he was on my final team with that Week 17 massive spike. And he had the huge game against Pittsburgh. So he's he's still capable of a – like, I don't have any talent concerns about him. That's basically what I'm saying. I think he still is the same wide receiver he's always been. Um, we'll see what they do at the quarterback position. Uh, but it can't really be worse. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And even if it's horrible, it might not be fun week to week. But in round two – you, you don't really need him to be like, you know, we were drafting Jalen Waddle as like a low floor <laughs> spike week receiver in round two last year, right? Like if yeah. Adams can certainly provide, he's going to have multiple 30 point weeks. Neighbors would have been a fun guy at the two, three turn too. So, you know, I, I can't yeah, get the that is yard wild game. how fast they're going. I'm still like, I, I'm, I'm still feeling a little bit of the sticker shock on just how high, Harrison and neighbors go. I don't well, think neighbors is more just, expensive just, than any rookie being an edge. Neighbors is more expensive than any rookie wideout we've ever seen either. Right. I know, which is crazy. And, 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 that, and then you got Marvin Harrison jr. Full round, more expensive. Okay. All right. Uh, I like, so to me, there's, I like, Addison. I'm okay with McBride. Although there's a lot of late quarterbacks and tight ends. I like, um, I was going to stump for Jaden Reed. But you seem to like every receiver except for him. Um, I'd also be fine with the Dunes, eh? And I'd Let's be the first. Yeah, I'm good with him. And then the the question: Do you care to stack Stroud here? Like quarterback des- deserves its own discussion. Do you do you want to do the the Stroud stack, or would you rather yeah. take? I mean, we could, and I I should probably mix some in. But generally, I just like a lot of the late wide receivers. Um, I'd be fine with Amari here too. I'd be quite fine with that because I like Watson's price a lot. Let's do Reed. You wanted to do Reed? We'll sure. take Reed. All right. I mean, Love feels like locked for a huge outbreak as well. Um, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of players to lo- like. It feels so much deeper than years past. I can't believe like Pacheco going close to like Cook. It just seems a little crazy. I don't. I don't know. He he seems so much more fragile to me as far as like a guy who could land there. Um, quarterback overall is like, I'm typically into elite quarterbacks. However, I am too, but I really like the prices on a lot of the late quarterbacks right yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, I, like, I think all three of the rookies, I like the price on. I think Fields is an incredible value. Fields I is egregiously priced. So is Murray. I think so Kyler is, is egregiously priced. Uh, yeah. I agreed about Herbert. Um, oh, Trevor. I mean, never, Trevor's yeah, I think Trevor's price. a great price. I think, I mean, it's it's never fun to say, but I think Deshaun Watson is like a pretty ridiculous value. Um, oh, yikes. So, uh, we're going to cancel Jacob for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, no, it's like, it's, a, it's weird where what I feel happened is underdog ranked Josh Allen, whatever, like 12th. Mm-hmm. And so you just have to wait until a certain volume of drafts happened to like condense these prices because it doesn't really make sense why he's a full round more expensive than Hertz and Lamar. Like he's not going to, even though he's the, the one-on-one he's incredibly safe. He's not going to like for sure outscore these two high ceiling quarterbacks themselves. And so ultimately that doesn't matter if Allen rips 40 points week 17. Right. But uh, you know, you, you do deal with the Buffalo weather. So I don't know. I'm just kind of like waiting for the market to like normalize these quarterback ranks and assume that they will eventually. But then again, once they release BBM five, 
it also updates again with new rankings, not whatever this rank, not whatever these ADPs yeah. are, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like getting a Lamar Mahomes start, that's just fun. This, yeah, that's pretty cool. This guy going AJ Brown and Devonta Smith when this guy's hurts is just good comedy. Just some good comedy. Just just two dudes hating each other. <laughs> I think T I Higgins. Think so much thought I had. Wow. T Higgins is a great price. Um. Yeah, agreed. I, Literally, like, what's the difference between T Higgins now versus T Higgins last year when he was a stupid price? Like. I mean, the, the McBride discussion versus these wideouts is interesting, right? Because you do yeah. have to start three wideouts. At the same time, yeah. McBride is a lock to outscore some of these wideouts. So it's like getting that type of production at tight end is worth so much. And I don't think like it's that you can't just punt tight end and think you're going to get by with like Chigo Conquo and crew who should not be drafted. Yeah. No, I, I've been I like McBride's price and I like Andrew's price too. Um and I need to force myself to not just draft like 40% Kyle Pitts. So well, yeah, you can't just like choose like, oh, I like these two guys late because I don't know, like if McBride drops 20 points in any of the playoff weeks, or really any of these guys do, you will need them most likely to advance to the next round. And I do I do struggle with the equation of like having to start three wideouts versus locking in a tight end who scores similar points at a onesie position, which just feels yeah. like very powerful. Christian Kirk's too cheap. What do you think the Jags do with Calvin Ridley? I agree because too. It, well, keeping him would be stupid. It's so interesting because they, it cost them a second round pick to resign him, which is like, right. So, and I just think that you, I think that would be dumb. You can't pay so, that, right? Right. So, I mean, we'll see, but I, I, We'll see what they do, but I mean, to me, the simple answer is you just take whatever money you were going to pay Calvin Ridley, you pay that to Marquise Brown instead, and you get ninety percent of the same player, and you keep your second round pick. I don't. I think that's a little disrespectful to Calvin Ridley, but I get your point. Um, like if Calvin Ridley came out last year and was like dominant superstar Calvin Ridley, then you just pay it. And you he was like seven, it. like but seven was, feet of yardage was, from having like ten touchdowns. You know, well, he like, was good. He was good, but I, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not super convinced that I'd want to pay a second round pick for the right to pay him a fair amount, val, fair market value contract at age definitely what, be no. like thirty plus. So I agree with that. Definitely no. Like that. Is there any like? Can they do any like weird stuff? Like Calvin hits free agency and then they sign him. Like, is there any like scam stuff they I'm can do sure. like that? Um. All right. Who are you feeling here? Um. Well, I guess. Well, I, let's see. What's the Bowers is there? Is there, that, is there any chance that he would make it back all the way, or no? Bowers? No, I meant uh, Love. Like I'm just like in terms of our stack option, would we have to take him now, or could we push him? Yeah, no, I think we can wait on. Uh... Okay. Okay. I, I kinda, um. Yeah. Fields. Fields feels fun. Yeah. Super into Fields. Okay. Yeah. Let's take Fields, and then. I probably not want to do Bowers that we can then stack. That's fine. Fields. I'm also I'm down with a naked Joe too. Like he high ceiling. Um, is there any wide receiver here? Oh my god! Yeah, this is why I like taking him early. We well, could take Christian first. Watson and, and sure shoot for the double. Sure, sure. Why not? That's fine. Why not? Are any of these running backs tickling your fancy? No, I was I was like about to cape up for Josh Jacobs, but then he just went. So. Well, he also is like not going to be a Raider. Yeah, but that's fine. He'll be somewhere. He'll get a bunch of useless carries. Oh, this I don't want to be. I didn't even realize. I don't want to be in the business of caping for Josh Jacobs. But like six eleven feels like feels like that's pretty reasonable price. I, it really depends where he like. They see like all the running backs of yesteryear going these rounds. You know, <laughs> they do. <laughs> this is the ghost of running backs of. The best yeah. ball season pass. Christmas like, pass. Pollard and Mixon and Kamara and Jacobs and I mean Pollard's yeah. not even that old, man. Like who who do you yeah. where do you think he's gonna play? He's older than Josh Jacobs. Not touch. Uh, that's true. Uh where does Pollard play? No clue. Um, I mean, I think Philly would be the kind of team that might want to take a shot on him. Um I could see Baltimore potentially taking a shot on him. Um 
Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm hopeful. I'm holding the candle out for my boy. Um, I I hope I'd like to see him get another legitimate chance to have a semi feature role, um, healthy, and see if he's still got it or if he's just old and dust. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would be. He, he I, I, it on towards the second half, right? Yeah, like if I were an NFL team, I would give Pollard a shot to be the one A in my backfield because I still believe in him. But I don't know if an NFL team will like. To me, like he's he has. Like he's shown a much higher level of play recently than some of the other guys have. Like I would rather have him than like Joe Mixon. Um, Nick Chubb's like, price feels kind of insane. Like, do, is he? I, is this um, playing zero? Football? Zero percent. Like, we don't know where he's playing. We don't know when he's playing. We don't know if he's playing. Like, I, I get that he's Nick Chubb and he's fantastic, and you know, week seventeen is all that matters. But like, that was a nasty injury and. Yeah, just he feels more like a ninth round like. gamble and an eighth, yeah. a ninth round. You go on like, like a late seven. Goes. Yeah, and like I, I don't know. Like I'm into Allen, Hurts, Lamar, Mahomes, but when Fields, like when the sixth and seventh round is Fields, Burrow, Prescott, Herbert, Trevor's still on the clock, Kyler's still there. It's like, man, what are we, what are we doing out here? You know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of yeah. I'm fine. I'm training. totally fine with the. Jordan oh wow, this goes. guy took our fucking Jordan Love. At least he has Aaron Jones. Oh, he's the four running back dudes who have two of the running backs of yesteryear. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they got they got to get their naked <laughs> quarterbacks who were in the playoffs. Okay, now that he's gone, I'll bring him up. But is Najee Harris not like a pretty fantastic collect of the eighth round? I feel like Jalen Warren's an even better pick with like. I don't know, man. Like, not. I don't think Najee is. I, he does not have high weekly ceiling, ever. Yeah. Um, yeah unless, unless fair. like guys get tackled at the one yard line a bunch. Like that's like the lone scenario. He's not breaking off long runs. No, no, he's not. He, like even if something happens to Warren, like he's also not getting that Ben Roethlisberger check down offense. Although, yeah. who's playing quarterback there? Is it going to be Tannehill? Yeah, I mean, that would be my guess, right? But, I mean, if you if you believe the Beaver reporters, it's going to be a competition between Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. I don't believe them. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I do not. I refuse to believe that reality. <laughs> that's, a, that's an egregious suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> that's like every, the V writers are unanimous. Like it's going to be Kenny Pickett's job and Mason Rudolph if will have a chance they, to compete. They can shut and, the fuck up because they, they are just mouthpieces like, for the ownership. In, in <laughs> no, they like, they are like by far yeah. away that way. Um, is it going to surprise anyone? If that's just kind of how the Steelers roll though. Like they're so loyal. Like they don't, they don't really move on from people. If Christian Watson has t- like, Eight touchdowns, is it gonna surprise you? No. No, of course not. If he I mean, rides the bench, they got their double surprise you? No. No, of course not. Uh my my hundred percent draft exposure to Dontavian Wicks, by the way. I like Kyler here. Feels pretty good. Uh, totally fine with Kyler. Is Pitt still here for our stack with Fields? Uh no. No, who took fucking Pitts? What an asshole. Uh, I like Myers. Heartbreaking. I like DeAndre Swift. I like Chase Brown. I like, yeah, I don't want Swift. Uh, I don't want Brown. I like Ty Chandler, who is now yeah. the starting running back of the Vikings. I would argue Madison getting cut is bad for Chandler, but um, still fair. Like it's like I would have liked having Madison occupy one of the spots on the depth chart. Like that would. I kind of like Chase Brown and just gambling that friend. he holds it down. Yeah, that's fine with me. Sure, why not? You know, like fast, athletic. He. He doesn't yeah. feel that different than Zamir White, Ty Chandler, Jerome Ford, like all I mean, of think, them. I mean, you think he's better than Swift? Like, it's not, it's not too Galaxy Brain. I would be I, into Swift. I, I thought you were not into Swift based on. Like, oh, I play. like I I hate Swift like as a player, and but I I I I, I drafted a decent amount of him in best ball last year, despite hating him. Um, and I'll probably draft a decent amount this year at this price. I do think, in general, betting on the second year guy is probably more profitable than the yeah. okay. uh than the guy who couldn't get it done behind the best line. Swift Swift like definitely 
I've always been like kind of a spectator just in terms of like how he plays bothers me. And he was on my finals team and was probably like the most crucial player to my finals team because I really needed him to get me a second running back score and he completely dotted. So I'm, I'm angry at him against the Cardinals. Uh, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, cause I had Brees and obviously he smashed and I don't think I had any other running back that had like a realistic chance of putting up the score. So Swift was just uber necessary and he dotted. So now I hate him even more. But, uh, uh, bro, Andrew, you pick before us. You should have taken him if you wanted Chase Brown that so bad. Yeah, come on, man. He heard us talking about Warren, I guess. How about Mostert? Let's yeah. talk about Mostert and Mike Williams. Those are two names I wanted to well, talk Mike about. Mike Williams, uh, what are we doing here with Mike Williams? Enigma, Enigma. But like, is it gonna, what if he's healthy, man? And he, he's, he's a million years old and he's coming off an ACL. Like, no thanks. He's like 29. How Yeah, he probably is younger than I think. He's only 29. 29. He feels he's, older. He's two, he's two years and two days. Oh, no. I'm two days. My birthday's two days before his. But okay. he's two years younger than me. Um, I don't know. Okay. In, you, you, how are you going to, in a discussion of Mike Williams and Moster, how are you going to call Williams the old one? <laughs> oh, well, I just that is really the ACL. Like, well, I'm not drafting Mostert, but I don't know. This will be like the 11th year in a row that I don't draft Mostert. And, and like, sometimes that's a good plan and sometimes it's a bad plan. Like, yeah, I don't know what I to mean, say. I'm just, I've just never been in on this guy. And he, like, totally ruined me last year. And in previous years, it's been quite fine to not be in on Mostert. So, hard to say. Um, it's, like... I don't see why the Dolphins wouldn't just bring him back, right? Like, he was, like, second-team All-Pro or something. Has to. But, like, I guess the only question is if McDaniels doesn't think two is good enough to beat the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals, etc. I mean, A, why would you pay him $200 million? Like, I think that's, like, accepting mediocrity. And B, you probably think you need a elite running game to get it done. And I don't know if you think 31, 32 year old Moster is really going to be the piece that gets it done. Or if you think you need to get a rookie, a free agent, whatever. So I don't know. It, it does seem like he'll come on like the vet minimum though. Or whatever. That's the thing. Like I think he'll sign for probably nothing and they're pretty cap strapped and they have a Chan who I think they're, they're super cap give a lot of work to. So like, I don't know. It's, uh, they could draft someone, but are you going to invest that heavily in a running back when you already have a Chan who you really like? Like to me, just bringing back Mostert, who was good for them last year at like a million and a half, seems probably like the best option. Um, in which case, he'll probably be pretty reasonable. It's just, I mean, obviously, any any day that he steps on a field could be the day we find out he's completely washed. It's pretty hard to bet on a thirty-two year old running back. Thirty, who just came off a season with a lot of touches, you know, like yeah. Like in the, he's not truly thirty-one in running back years because he got hurt so many years. But can you ever remember a season like he had in your life? Like a guy who had never even really been like a massive star goes for like twenty-three touchdowns at age thirty-one. Like that was insane. No, bro, that is that was <laughs> utterly insane. And what he did to like fantasy overall was like was crazy. It was nuts. There's TJ no. Hawkinson, I want to be a believer in, but bro, like that's a brutal injury he suffered. Like, I don't I don't know, man. Yeah. And I mean, I lifelong clock hater, so I don't really look for reasons to be in on him. Um all right, who we got? Oh, where's my where's where's I'm my interested boy in Ford here? and White? Um yeah, White's interesting. Lockett's there. Lockett's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna vouch for my for my guy Trey Benson. Wix, okay. I love. Benson, we're in. We're in on that. And then would you rather have Zamir White or Jerome Ford? Charbonnet is also interesting. But yeah, like, well, I got my Benson picks. I'll let you have anybody. I, I like everybody available. Um, and I, I mean, I'm a massive Wick stand, but we probably wish we had Jordan Love if we were doing that. I'm good with uh, White. He'll I guess we're going to go White. and just, I mean, who do you think is more likely to have the starting role, White or Ford? Well, by the playoffs, I think White. I think the most likely scenario is Chubb probably comes back on a reworked deal. 
and it's probably their starting running back on fantasy playoffs. So uh, I think White has the clearer path. I think double tapping running back there is pretty good for our team. Wicks is an yeah. interesting pick too. Like he was pretty studly for. Yeah, and I really like him, but I don't. I don't know that we need to. Like, if we had love, then for sure. But without love, we probably need to bet against some people in this Green Bay room. If we are yeah, already I, have Reed and Watson, so I think we kind of have to bet against Wicks and Dobbs. What's your vibe on this Romeo Dobbs price? Because he's a really polarizing guy. Where like I think, I think he, he's a bit egregious, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I posted about the Green Bay receivers a little while ago. I said I think Reed is like justifiably the highest price. Um, and I'm fine with paying it. I think Watson is like, like you said, like total, like I think it was the really room, unlucky floor is zero, but like, I think the, the price is like fair. The price is like very unlikely to be correct. Cause I think he'll either be way underpriced or way overpriced, but I think it's like a pretty reasonable hedge for his profile. And then I think Wix is just like a guy that has a lot of legit upside and is priced very cheaply and is by far my favorite of the group at cost. And Dobbs is the guy who has no upside. So I think like, no, but his upside we know what, is we know like what he is. He is a, we know what he is. He's an inning eater. Like he, he's going to eat routes and snaps and be okay. And he can have and some a contested weeks. catch touchdown guy. Like every year he just seems to a contested catch, like come down with like eight to 10 touchdowns, you know? Yeah. Like it's fine. It's just, I don't know. I don't like the price on him. To me, he's the lowest upside of the group. And I don't want to make that bet. I, I prefer. I can answer this for you, Liam. The upside is that he's actually the wide receiver two or three and not the wide receiver four, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think there's, I think nothing is, I don't get not a high chance of overtaking anyone above him. I don't get that at all. He was rotating. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Quite evenly with everybody. I don't see this as like an established hierarchy whatsoever. Like Watson barely played. Reed was a part-time player. Wicks was a part-time player. And Dobbs was the only full-time player. And he's not very good. So I don't see anything here as being particularly settled. Uh, last year when they were all healthy, they all rotated. I think that that's how they'll probably start the year. And I think if any of them proves themselves indispensable from the lineup, then they will take away snaps from the other three and allocate them to that guy. So like, I, I just like a Wix as young player flashed heavily um, in yards per out run and targets per out run and just watching. And you know, you're getting kind of a similar bet to Reed, which is like a partial time player with a lot of really promising year one notes at, you know, worse bet, it's worse draft capital, but at like a fraction of the cost. So I think he's drawing live to be the highest scoring Packers wide receiver this year. I'm not going to say it'd be definitely. 25%, but I, I'm, I'd say it's at least like 10%. Yeah, I would even, yeah, like 15% because injuries mm -hmm. happen. Green Bay has so much draft capital that, it, I mean, honestly, I think it'd be kind of fun if they could invest in like a, maybe a true number one and just like push one of these guys out or trade one of these guys. I don't know. I don't know who, who that would be for them. What's their pick? Um, I what do they, I mean, what do they need? I guess. Like 20, 20 something. I think, that, I think they're looking at corner probably. Yeah. Well, they traded away. A corner, I guess defense is what they'll they'll do. But I've heard that center rumored to them too. I guess my internet just will not work for that. Um, Daniels, I think, is also like really greatly priced. If you the way you talked oh, about him seems that like he's egregiously priced right now. He should he should catch Richardson steam, and Richardson is like. I guess people saw it. He got hurt, and they're like, "Yep, no, that's we believed it." You know? Yeah, I I totally agree that uh, he's he's a silly price. Matthew Stafford, as much as I like him, is probably like you take him for stack purposes, but like he has very little ceiling. Yeah, the fun of Matthew Stafford was last year. He went like round sixteen. Yeah. Around yeah. and this this is the Devin Singletary effect I like to call, where it's like Devin Singletary almost always alternates years of like having <laughs> a great year and then bombing and then having a great year yeah. bombing and he just like goes from like around ten to around sixteen, around ten, around sixteen. 
Um, all right. We're on the clock here. Uh, Michael Wilson is there if we care for a stack. I don't even know if he has like a lock on a job. Um, double tapping tight end also feels tempting. Um, yeah, I we really don't have like, a tight end yet, do we? I like uh, Mayer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I really like Mayer. I like Mayer quite a bit. Um, um, McLaughlin feels like a yep, fun role. That's another dive. guy that I really like. And I don't mind estimate, and I'd be fine. McConkey, isn't he one of the? the yeah, top? I like McCon. I like I like the conch shell. Um, I'd right, be good well, with Mayor and Mayor and Conk. Mayor and Conk, yeah, I kind of like. Yeah, that. it was a fine. McConkey's like a fringe, a fringe first round guy, right? He, yeah, and the fun thing about being a fringe first rounder is um, you can go you know, mid picks first. at the end of the. Well, you know who? No, I mean, yeah, you, you the, the picks the at the end of the first round. It's like. The Cowboys, the Bills, the Chiefs, like yeah. all the places you want to get drafted. Yeah, that feels he feels a really nice priced. And Mayor as like a rotation of three tight ends feels awesome. Man, I don't know yeah. if I can do the Darren it's Waller like, experience again. Just think about it, right? Like we got so Cowboys pick 24, and then it's Bills 28, and and Chiefs 32. And like, you know, any anybody you can get get into one of those three spots, that's that's the dream for sure. I don't know why I can't get my Google to work, but I was going to pull up the draft order. Pat Fryermuth, like originally I felt was a really nice price. And now with John Smith released, it feels <laughs> troubling. He's coming to town. <laughs> He's got to, right? Like that's a lock, right? Like, come on now. <laughs> so they already have like four. Oh, but they already Washington. have Washington. So that's. And Connor Hayward. Yeah, I don't know. He's also just like not, not that good. Yeah, just, just whatever. Adam Thielen, bro. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I can do the Adam Thielen experience. No, I. I mean, I opted out of the Adam Thielen experience last year, and this guy's got uh, some real olds. L listen to this roster: Cooper Cup, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, Montgomery, Montgomery. James Connor. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Rodgers and Adam Thielen. That is that is wow. the old draft, dude. <laughs> That's, he's definitely turning back time on that one. What's Herzig's team? Let's run through that. He's got um, the Bijan, Achan, Barkley. Barkley, I don't know, man. He's he doesn't. Do you think he's a giant for sure? No, I think he's not, which is good because then he'll be somewhere probably fun. Maybe he, I mean, the Raiders could sign him, something like that. The Cowboys could sign him. I don't think Tegan. the Raiders would sign him. I think the Raiders, if they're going to sign someone, they would just sign their own guy. I think that the the fun one for Barkley is the Texans. Mm. Yeah, I guess just a Singletary replacement uh, upgrade there. Uh, yeah, because Tegan. they're the team that should sign a running back. Like they have, they have cheap so much cap Stroud, score. cheap Nico, cheap Dell. Like yeah, like. If you're if you go sign a running back, like you're well, they're the only they're the team that should be like here, Barkley, two years, 25 million. Let's have fun. He's got Higgins, McLaurin, Kirk, Evan Ingram, Dobbs, Trevor Lawrence, Keon Coleman, Rashid Shahid, Drake May, and Luke Musgrave. Musgrave's an interesting one because you know, at towards the end of the year, they started to play um the other tight Crap. end, but yeah, then Musgrave came back. Um, most of the wideouts seem attached to good quarterbacks. Drake May probably going to be the 102. So getting the McLaurin this, stack there. The whole it, Green Bay situation is going to be fascinating because like there's six options for four routes every every play, and that's, yeah. that's including Bo Melton. Well, and all yeah, and also they're get is, is that who you think will be their running back? Oh uh, no! I meant their fifth wide receiver, Bo Melton. But uh, oh. their their running back, I think Aaron Jones will probably just renegotiate. Well, but I almost certainly they'll get a more serviceable running back than AJ Dillon as RB two, unless they really like. Yeah, I mean they might like Emmanuel Wilson, um, who they had last year as like a UDFA, um, or they can just bring in any any guy in the draft this year. Um, yeah, I would. I don't know, just with how they operate, I feel like they probably will draft one of the big boys. Um, so maybe we're looking at like a Ray Davis team. We're just looking at an unstacked, Audrey Estime. unstacked super squad team here. I mean, Fields and Kyler being cheap, just the dream. Also, 
a big discount on Kyler. All we need is um, Marvin to go three, and then the Cardinals take a dune. They have four, and then we have a stack. Oh yeah, that's that's or more. I think or, we'd rather um, Marvin go go four though, and just reap those benefits. Yeah, or or we get. Um, uh, the Atlanta Falcons trade for Fields and then take a Dunze at eight, which would be pretty shitty for Dunze though, because how many of London and Pitts with Fields as quarterback? But yeah, that's <laughs> you didn't really mention these names: Polk, Leggett, yeah, Corley. These are just yeah. I mean, there's so many dudes. Well, Marshawn Lloyd sticks out to me um, right there. That was one of the guys we did talk about, and Polk for sure is is interesting. Um, like Jack Horley, I mean, we'll take my guy Nick Nolan to me. Um, tight end, we could skip, or we could take Sanders if we think there's anything there. Yeah, I'm in with I'm in on Sanders. I'm not not as into the Mitchell thing um, in terms of like kind of into Zay Jones, man. Like Ridley's gone, he could just be again the de facto wideout too. He's there. also he's a cut candidate himself, though is the concern, but not right. not against it. Lloyd for sure, we're going right. Yeah, really into the Lloyd pick, and then I'm I'm fine with whatever. I, I probably like my vote would probably be Sanders, but I'm I'm good with whatever. For t- yeah, I'm down with Sanders. Um, what's our vibe on Mitchell's injury? It's probably pretty bad, and I think they're signaling they're going to add to the room. I don't know. That's a tough flick for me. Okay, that's a guy we can Galen, add. Like Jalen Wright's the there. Do, do you like yeah, Sanders? That's an interesting one. I'm I'm I'd be fine with Wright. Fuck it. We're going to figure out tight end and take the fast dude. I mean, tight end becomes a real dart fest late, but like Greg Dulcich, I like. Jelani Woods, I like. Can- yeah, I, I also am in on the on the super late Greg Dulcich, uh, Martin Gale. Dawson Knox is, you know... Gonna get some touchdowns. Luke Schoenmacher, I've made worse bets than that. Um, Brevin Jordan, I've made worse bets than that. Juwan Johnson, Tyler Conklin, Tucker Craft, anyone but Chiga Conquell. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not doing Chiga Conquell. I don't know why he's he's even being drafted. Shout out Bindles for the flute. Uh, Love you want the flute? My flute broke. If you are a longtime listener, but it still kind of works. Jacob's face during that was perfect. He's like, "What is going on?" <laughs> I do. I do remember your flute bet now, and that was that was beautiful to watch. Um. See, the thing with Elijah Mitchell is he's just like that, not guaranteed. Yeah, the, the problem with Mitchell is that when McCaffrey gets hurt, there's a 30% chance that Mitchell's active. Yeah, it's <laughs> it. there's like three or four dudes there who could be the running back, in my opinion. Um, yeah. All right, we got five more picks. Two of them, at minimum, are being tight end. Yeah, correct. And I would say... At least two will be wide out, and that gives us one more pick to play with where we could either do a third quarterback, a seventh running back, a ninth wide out, or fourth tight end. And depending who our tight ends are, I don't mind four tight ends. Running back, uh, I don't know. Like If we think Lloyd and Wright are actually like playing snaps in the NFL, I kind of feel solid at running back. Yeah. I, um, I feel solid at quarterback for sure with Fields and Murray. I feel kind of solid at wideout too, so I really it really could go either way. Yeah, I think we what like what do we want our end structure to be here? Like what are, we're at what two? Well, that's what I'm. We're at a two six six one right now. So probably we want three, and then so it'd be what two six nine three or two seven eight three? Is that the debate? Well, the the debate is either two seven uh, eight. Three or two six nine three or yeah. two six eight four. 
Oh yeah, we could do the two six eight four. That's not the worst idea. What are what are we out of receivers? So What's your like- vibe on when Tank Dell is hitting the field? I think probably week one. Okay. What's yours? I hope week one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He got kind of hurt late-ish in the season. Like, I wasn't really a what. I mean, I guess it's like, is he? It's not a lock that he just bounces back and is the same guy. No, because it's. I mean, this you can take this as good or bad, but it's basically the Pollard injury, which Pollard had no trouble getting back on the field for week one, and he got injured way later. But um, the downside is that Pollard looked like shit. <laughs> so that is not good. I didn't know it was the same injury as Pollard. Um, yeah, man, I think Dawson Knox is a safe bet for some touchdowns, but you're probably getting a more ball dominant, uh, wide receiver than Gabe Davis in the mix. So that's, that's happening. That'd be a concern. Hopefully. Well, I think we should do. Burks is interesting. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I definitely want to do. Uh, I would, I would, I, there's two two rookie receivers that would be really interesting to me. Late would be uh, Ricky Pearsall and then my guy Jalen McMillan. Okay. I think um, Slayton's a great price. Slayton's fine too. Mooney, Mooney Burton is also and Noah Brown are interesting. Yeah. Um, Asovius and Charlie Jones are interesting. Assuming oh, yeah. Tyler Boyd's out of there. What, what? Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to hope they trade T. Higgins, I think, for those guys to really hit. No, it was, it was Boyd's out of there, and one of them's playing slot. Yeah, well, Jones would be the one to play slot, I think. Yeah, so Jones is interesting then. If he's just like yeah. Tyler Boyd, but in the 20th round. Yeah, I assign this, I think, needs Higgins gone to have out. Sovius is interesting, too. Um, okay, none of the tight ends really do it for me right now um yeah what didn't what like yeah what didn't you got any takes on hunter henry i guess his quarterback play should be better well we don't know what he's gonna play he's a free agent oh god i i i feel like we have to take burks like this is you know all right fine okay burks is one of our picks and then who would you like the the second pick to be uh well pearsall went unfortunately um so probably i'll, I'll let you pick because i probably want it to be hunter henry <laughs> okay if you if you're into that i'm okay with that <laughs> if you're into that <laughs> i'm thinking the professional tight end who's gonna run like 500 routes this year somewhere how old is hunter henry he's like 29 all right whatever i mean caught six touchdowns on a shitty team hopefully his team is less shitty yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm here. I'm getting Fant in the chat too. That's that's the other. Uh... I mean, I, I I would I would snap take Greg Dulcich over Hunter Henry. Oh, is Greg Dulcich available? Yeah, but his ADP is like in the twenty. Oh, oh, I would have been totally down with Greg Dulcich there. Oh, I mentioned him. <laughs> okay. Well, well, well. I thought that he was gone, then I didn't see him. I, I mean, he's he like far down. He's not locked to see the field, but. He's an upside swing. Davis, I'd, I'd be fine. Let's do let's do the two six eight four and let's take uh, Fant and Dulcich if we can. Okay, I don't. People are listening to our stream, so generally not oh. a great plan to to say our plans. But uh, well, we've we've discussed Greg Dulcich plenty. I think if people wanted to make this our Greg Dulcich, yeah, if they, it, they'd have the opportunity by now. <laughs> do we think J.K. Dobbins is playing football well next year? Uh, I think he's playing football. But I saw him running today. I don't think he's going to play it well. I mean, I don't have any basis to think that he would play it well. Tyler Boyd could smash this price. He could. I think he's kind of washed. Daniel Jones could smash this price too. He really could. And yeah. wh- and why does Will Levis go I, after Derek Carr? Like that doesn't. I matter. I take all the Will Levis. Like. I, oh, I remember. I remember the Will Levis chats with you. I I love Will Levis. I, I absolutely adore Will Levis. And I I will have like thirty percent Will Levis exposure in Underdog this year. 
Best ball guy is saying John o. Smith is going back to the Patriots. <laughs> I doubt that. Let's talk about JSN's price. JSN over Christian Kirk is a tough click for me. J- JSN is egregiously priced in all formats, and I don't think he's that good. Yeah, I mean, he could. If Lockett's out of there, the opportunity is there. Yeah. But, like, why would Lockett be out of there exactly? Like, I understand that we're like wish casting that, but he's a good player. Why would they just get rid of him? I don't know. He's they don't have any cap constraints that I'm aware of. He's a he's an okay player, but like, what are they gonna do with that money? Like, I don't think that they're exactly up against it. Work. I'll I'll look up the Seattle cap situation. Well, they're gonna run the rock too. This is a good price for McCarthy if McCarthy's truly gonna go in the yep. first round. Yep, agreed. There's a lot of players to like, you know. Yeah. Deep. Tight end room of Mayor and Hunter Henry is. Oof. That's great, you know. Just a couple, a uh, couple of uh, mediocre white men. I've I've taken some shares of Gibson. Just like us. <laughs> We're below mediocre. I've taken some <laughs> shares of Miles Sanders and uh I do. Gibson still. I do hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> um are you interested at all in any late round Sanders and Gibson? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I I've been I've been taking both of these bums and I, I don't like it. I don't like myself, but I do it. I feel like I need to take a shower. It's but... better than like Damian Pierce, you know? <laughs> yeah, I feel I mean it's like what the fuck happened to Damian Pierce, dude? How do you have I this don't know. rookie year to the to this past year? I think it's, it's I think it's gotta be a scheme thing. Like he goes from being like a power back to having yeah. to run this zone scheme. And didn't really fit what he does well. And then, you know, I think running back is a big confidence position. It's like you get in a rhythm and you feel confident. And then he struggled and then he didn't. And then it just kind of got away from him. But it's like the opposite of Zach Moss. Like Zach Moss had to have been in the wrong, like, blocking scheme for him. And then he was in the right one with the Colts. Yeah, exactly. Similar running backs, actually. Oh God, Rashad Bateman, are you doing it again, dude? Obviously, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it again. I don't want to talk about it though. <laughs> but next, I just I posted question, after. Did you, did you see? Did you see the? Uh, well, I'm sure you did. You saw the I tweet. Did, yeah. yeah, I just posted like the drunk Bugs Bunny meme. <laughs> I'm just can't can't do this. I again. mean, like you, the problem is you can squint and be like, yeah, okay, he was hurt all last year again. Like now he's not How going to be. How would you power rank the prospects of our ceremonial wide receivers from our main event team? So we, we've got uh, Jamison Williams, Rashad Bateman, um, Mingo, JSN. I'm counting JSN as ceremonial since we played Jalen Guyton over him. Uh, oh Jonathan my Mingo. God, dude, the Guyton experience. Uh, I felt so good about Mingo. the Guyton play. Okay, Mingo, Tony, JSN, Jamison, Bateman. Who else was an expert? Was a was one of our ceremonial receivers. Those those are the core members, I think. Wait, we got we got two picks here. Um, oh, that's Mingo right at the top. Mingo, I can't escape <laughs> that guy. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're at two six seven two right now. Not so even won. us mentioning. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's get our tight ends. Not even us mentioning Dulcich could get him drafted. I want, we, I want fat too. What's your belief in Jelani Woods? Oh man, the Ballard quote today was rough. <laughs> they they asked him about his tight ends. He was like, uh, and he went through, he's like, we've got a lot of guys who do a lot of good things. He's like, we've got uh Mo Ali Cox, like everything that he brings to the table. And we got Colin Granson, and he's like a move tight end. On oh, the really one guy that really stood out is Will Mallory. And Jelani Woods, our coaching staff doesn't even really know the guy. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I would also I think all of these tight ends are draftable. Yeah, I mean I've already planted my flag on Fant, but you can pick whichever one you all want. All right, let's do it, dude. Fant won Fant won me BBM too, so I'm a Fant truther. Oh yeah. 
Actually, I would have drafted Tanner Hudson if I thought about it longer. Tanner Hudson is Are the like, Bengals ever going to get a real tight end? What are we doing over there? Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, I guess Brock Bowers could like somehow land there. But if Brock Bowers lasts to the Colts, I think that they're going to take him. If um, if the Bengals don't draft a tight end, Tanner Hudson seems like a really nice price. Yeah. I think that they're not drafting Bowers. I, I feel like that's... I don't know if he'll last to 15, but I don't know. I, I would be pretty surprised if uh, we didn't jump all over that if he got to us. Dude, how could you not take Fant when you take Dulcich? Like, that's just synergy, right? They, they I know. Trade between the Broncos and the Seahawks. And for our next pick, we take an Alberto. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, the, did you see the Eagles uh, signed him to a future? Oh, you bet I did. Thing? You bet I have Alberto tweet alerts. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess we're going to end this bad boy with a wideout. Yeah. And yeah, like our wideout room is like, um, it's I'm, I'm gonna stump in some I'm ways because like for... Diggs is older, Dell is coming off injury, Watson and Reed. We don't truly know the order there. Adunzi's a rookie, feels good there. McConkey feel good there. Burks is Burks, so who knows? Um, but we got in a good price there. But there's a lot of wideouts to like. Yeah, my I mean, I'm gonna stump for Joe McMillan, but I'm totally down with. And these other dudes, whoever you want. I'm not going to push too hard about it. Oh, uh, he was drafted. Him? He has an ADP of like 239. Who took him? I guess somebody listened to our stream. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I quite like Demarcus Robinson. Yeah, I, I'm fine with him. I was advocating right. for him last year since they did that one. I like Trey Tucker. Um, yeah, I like Trey Tucker too. That's one of my faves. I don't know what's up with OBJ. He wasn't terrible last year. That was another one of our ceremonial receivers. Is Luke McCa- Luke McCaffrey brothers with Lad McConkey and Christian McCaffrey? Not sure. Um, John Mechie. Do we think he's like, is there any chance there at development? Uh, I would think unlikely. I think Aguilar unlikely. I'm interested in. Charlie Jones. Could do worse. Seems interesting. Yeah. Xavier Gibson seems interesting. Who Are there any of the other rookie lefts? Like is Cor- uh, Corley's probably gone by now. Is um, Jamari Thrash available? Yes. That's that's another rookie guy I kind of like. Johnny Wilson. We need a guy who's like for sure giving us points. Yeah, okay. Well, that's not any of these rookies. Uh, Demarcus Robinson is for sure giving us points. Calvin Austin is um, giving us points. He might be giving us points. Kyle yeah. Phillips is probably giving us points. Justin Shorter mm-hmm. has like an outside <laughs> shot of getting that job. Um, Katerius Tony, man. Greg hey, Dorch is giving us points. Is he? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, oh is my he? god. Juju. AJ Hamler. Is Devontae is, is is Parker giving us points? No, he's not. <laughs> is Tim Patrick, though? <laughs> okay, now we're in the wide receivers of yesteryear. Is LaVisca Chenault getting us points? Terrace Marshall's here. Producer. <laughs> TPJ, the, the the major threat to your boy Jamison Williams that he didn't need. Um, Jameson Crowley. Julio, we got Julio. <laughs> I think we're past the point of no return. Once Chris Conley, Super Bowl hero. Antonio Brown, still in the mix. All right, let's see who these people are taking. I, I smoked weed with Johnny Wilson in college. Oh, that's enough for me. <laughs> Tim Patrick can't tear his ACL three years in a row, can he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hope not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, really, any of these guys seem in the mix. 
Trey Tucker, it's like, I mean, he's, isn't he like just a starting wideout for them? Yeah, I'm I'm super into the Trey Tucker. It thing. is. That's... We do have three Raiders though, which is not. Uh, well, we have Fields, right? He could get traded there. I guess. He's like minus five hundred to be a Falcon. Yeah. Um, Will Levis was once minus one thousand to be a Colt. So. Fair. Yeah, Charlie Jones is the one I keep on bringing up. Um, let's do Robinson. I like Robinson quite a bit. Sure. Kind of bald for second. them. Let me name this bad boy. The link to follow Jacob on Twitter is in the description below. Oh, Jacob, anything else you want to tell the fellows and ladies? Uh, no, uh, that's all good. This is a blast. Nice short pod. And yeah, uh, nice short two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. And uh, everybody, you know, everybody enjoy your rookie drafts. Uh, everybody enjoy your betting board drafts. Everybody enjoy whatever. We got, uh, well, rookie con. Tent loading up uh, over the next few weeks up on thinking about thinking I needed a big break. Um, but now we're, we're fully in gear. We've got the combine going. So everything will be getting up um, dynasty points back in your feed. So and you guys do that. Uh, I do. We'll be doing it again soon. This is fun for me. You can just like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're not in my discord, join below. And if you feel like it, you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Peace.